Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. And welcome to uh, another stream. Man doesn't stream for two months straight, then streams twice in four days. Five days? I don't remember. I lose track of days pretty easily. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Hopefully nothing's broken because, like, OBS updated before I, uh... I mean, there was, there was an OBS update that I've been putting off for the past little while just because, like, I'm always scared to update OBS because I never know if it's going to break something. Um, so, naturally, I decided the best time to update it would be immediately before a stream. So, hopefully everything's okay. It's all new and spiffy. Like, my, my men the menus on my side all look very sleek and cool. Happy to have everyone here. Hello, hello. Hello to all the familiar names and faces and people and places. I'm excited. I am excited. Because we got a brand new holiday-themed Stardew Valley challenge that we're going to be going through. By the way, before I get into this, this is completely separate from the stream itself, but I saw some people talking about it in chat before. Um, a very uh, awesome Stardew content creator and uh, and acquaintance slash friend of mine, Salmence, S-A-L-M-E-N-C-E, recently had his channel, his YouTube channel hacked and like all his videos set to private and is, is a whole big thing. Um, so... Go see him on like he still he still like uh, does stuff on Twitch, and he's working on getting his channel back. I'm I'm wishing him all the best, um, but he is an amazing content creator, and everyone go show him whatever support you can in in these trying times. I can't imagine being in his shoes that gut wrenching gut wrenching feeling of seeing your channel like all like all that work and time and effort and everything being put into that, and then just seeing it being taken away from you so quickly like that so yeah definitely he's also he also does have a second youtube channel called still sal i think um go check that out if you're uh, if you're able to find it he's got more details on his like twitter so you can check twitter if you've got that but yeah ali if you want to link link salmon's twitch that would be awesome that'd be greatly appreciated thank you just you know we got to support each other in this community and that's a that's a huge blow so lots of love going out to him However, I do digress. There is the link to Salmence's uh, Twitch channel if you'd like to show some support. Please do. And if you saw, like, I, I, I don't know if it's still, like, doing the thing. Like, I saw it in my subscriptions when, when Salmence's channel got hacked. It was, like, some random live stream. Uh, and I was like, what the heck is this? I never subscribed to this. And I unsubscribed because I thought there was some, like, glitch in the system. Then I found out about the hacking and I resubscribed. So if you see that, like, weird live stream, it's probably his channel or someone else who got hacked. Because I also saw some other people were subject to the same hacking, unfortunately. No one else in the Stardew community, as far as I know. But, uh, just keep an eye out there. But I'm sure that, uh, he's working with YouTube and they'll, they'll get it back. All back in action, so... For now, let's not worry about any of that. Let's Sa Sal's going to be just fine. Sal Mens, lots of love going out to him. And uh, without with that, with that out of the way, I lost my train of thought. We're doing a Stardew challenge, the Great Stardew Giftathon. Now you might not have been here for the previous stream on Thursday, or you may remember you may have been there and remember that we left things in a somewhat nebulous state because. The whole idea of the Stardew Giftathon was, well, you know, I could sit here and explain it, or what I could do is I could explain it in a little more of a little more of a sixth grade science class way to demonstrate what I mean. Welcome to the uh, welcome to my presentation. Welcome to my PowerPoint presentation on the Great Stardew Giftathon. Starring Chloe and Timby. All your one-stop shop for all your Stardew Giftathon related um, inquiries and information. So here we go. We got a little PowerPoint to go through. Spin just to get you all excited. Should you be taking notes? You can. Uh, there will be a time for questions, comments, and concerns at the end of the uh, presentation. So I'm just gonna get through this and we'll let's do it. So what is the Giftathon? 
The gift of Thon, in its simplest form, is to start from a brand new farm and complete the favorites page of every villager's gift log within two in-game years. Now, this is slightly different from the way I presented it on Thursday. Originally, I wanted to be complete every villager's loved gifts in a single in-game year. But we started to run into some complications with that, with various aspects of it, namely, especially Kent. Kent was not uh, able to be gotten within the first in-game year, obviously. And there were some, like, workarounds we were discussing with that, but instead I've reworked it to this. So, what does this exactly mean? Well, you can see. A villager's favorite gifts consist of all gifts they either love or like. This is by far the biggest change. Originally, it was just love gifts. Now, their favorites page, there's like a little page on the gift log for every uh, villager that has their favorites, and that lists all their loved and all their liked gifts. So we're going to be trying to fill that in for every single villager. That's to sort of help balance it out for expanding to two in-game years. If I was just going for love gifts, then it would be too easy if I was just doing that for two in-game years. I think doing love and like makes it bit more of a challenge. Actually, a lot more of a challenge than I bargained for. You'll see what I mean as we can continue here, but... Um, all gifts must be physically given to each villager in order to count. Completing an, an entry using secret notes or via NPC dialogue is against the rules. So this is basically just saying there are certain mechanics in the game that can fill in the gift log for you. Namely, if you find a secret note and it's like, here's Penny's shopping list for the holidays for her mom and for Sam and for yada yada yada, and that... Reading that secret note will fill in the gift log based on that information. You can also get gift log filled in by just talking to people. Like, sometimes it'll be like, like, Mayor Lewis will be like, you know, don't you know that Marnie just loves her farmer's lunch? A uh, yuck. I don't know why Lewis is goofy in my mind, but, um, so those don't count. We have to actually give every single gift to a villager in order for it to count. Just in case there's any, uh scuttlebutt about that. Also, only villager-specific gifts are required. Universal gifts are not necessary. This is the same as previous, as previously stated. And here's an example. A completely non-biased, randomly chosen villager to, to demonstrate it. Figure 1A, in case you're curious. So this is what a completed gift log would look like. All of her favorites, loved gifts, her liked gifts, and none of this, like, universal ones. Now, what are universal gifts? I'm so glad you asked. Just in case, just so there's no ambiguity whatsoever. These are the universal gifts that do not count for the purposes of this challenge. So we don't have to give any of these universal loves or any of these universal likes. There are some exceptions where universal likes are specific loves for villagers. For example, flowers. Penny loves poppies. Um, there's some other examples here, I'm sure, as well. But yeah, so universal loves we all know and what know and cherish. Artisan goods, cooking. There's obviously lots of cooking that is in the loves for very specific villagers. Flowers, forest minerals, fruit tree fruit, which is except banana and mango. It's kind of a weird, I don't know why it's like that. Gems, vegetables, life elixir and maple syrup for some reason. Canadians rise up. I don't know why it's like that. Um, but yeah, so these are what do not count. But what does, what does that leave us with? Like how, what does this look like for each individual villager? I'm glad you asked. How many gifts do we have to give? So sorted here in descending order of quantities of gifts that we need for each villager are the number of gifts. And this amounts to, you don't have to do the math here. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is 725 gifts. This is 725 total gifts. And you can see it runs quite the gamut, right? Like, you got George down here, he only needs three things, two of which you can get in your first spring. And then it's like a little slow, steady climb, and eventually you get up here to Penny and Leia and the Dwarf, like, they're going actually insano mode over here. Penny needs 57 gifts, and we'll get, we'll get to that. So this is the, these are the numbers. These are the numbers as they stand right here. 725. It might sound like a lot, but there's some condensing we can do. You might notice here, it's sort of as it from the from the very bottom here, it sort of climbs pretty steadily, just like one or two gifts at a time. And then right around Maru here, between Maru and Elliot, there's a big jump. 17 to 27. And then there's a little bit more of a jump somewhere around here where Jody, where it goes like actually crazy. What accounts for this big jump all of a sudden? It's something I like to call the fruit differential, okay? 
The fruit differential. A total of 11 villagers-like gifts include all fruit. These villagers are Elliot, Harvey, Shane, Leia, Demetrius, Jody, Kent, Linus, Pam, Robin, and Sandy, all of whom were in the top echelon of the previous slide. Exclamation point info, info if you want to see this, uh, I think it's exclamation point info. I added a new command so that if you want to like go and see this slideshow for yourself, I guess. <laughs> um, remember that fruit from fruit trees. So there's like apples, apricots, cherries, pomegranates, and the other two. Uh, count as universal likes, so they're not included here. That leaves us with 20 different fruit that we need 11 copies of for all these villagers, and these are the individual fruit that you can see. Most of them are pretty straightforward, things that we can just, like, grow pretty easily. The only real, like, oddballs out here, ancient fruit's gonna be kind of sticky, and chi fruit is dependent upon getting a specific uh, chi quest from the walnut room. But I'm sure we can pull it off, don't worry about it. Otherwise, most of this is pretty insubstantial. But that actually, I mean, that's 220 items right there that are pretty, that we don't need to, like, worry about an awful lot. But see, this fruit differential, this is small potatoes compared to the biggest sticking point in this challenge. Yes, cactus fruit as well, exclamation point cactus. Or extra unless you're trash. I don't remember the commands, man. <laughs> exclamation point commands. Argon cactus. This, this is small potatoes, though, compared to the biggest sticking point of this challenge. And that deserves its own slide. Welcome to the Penny and Dwarf Dilemma. I've, I've uh, exaggerated their sprites somewhat here in order to reflect my feelings on this this whole debacle that we're about to get into. You might have noticed the penny, that Penny and the Dwarf were very high in their number of gifts required. Why is that? Why is that? So... Penny and the Dwarf have all 42 artifacts. All 42 artifacts as liked gifts, right? Then we also have to bundle in the fact that we need 60 total items to, do to donate to the museum in order to unlock the sewers and meet Krobus in the first place. Assuming we can find and donate all 53 minerals to the museum, we'll still need at least 7 artifacts to donate to the museum. All that combined, we are required to obtain at least two copies of every artifact and three copies of at least seven of them. It, this is suddenly turned from the Stardew Valley Giftathon to the Stardew Valley Artifact Collection stream. So in two years, we have to obtain two copies of most every artifact and three copies of some other ones. So this is uh, this is where things start to go a little crazy. But don't worry, it gets worse. It gets worse. It gets much worse. Across two years in Stardew Valley, count them up, there are a total of 32 weeks. 16 weeks in a year. Every week, you can give a maximum of two gifts to a villager. You might be able to see where this is going. You can give one additional gift on their birthday, but only if their birthday isn't in one of the first two days of the week. So if their birthday is on a Monday or a Tuesday, eh, eh, you can only you cannot give them that extra gift on their birthday because the gift you give for their birthday will count towards the two-gift limit. Whereas if you give them two gifts before their birthday, then you can give them one gift on their birthday as an extra gift, even if you already hit that two gift limit. So it's, hopefully you understood that. This means we can give each villager a total of 64 or 66 gifts, depending on when their birthday falls, 65 or 67 for our winter star recipients, because the winter star, you can give an extra gift for that too, but that only applies to one villager, right? And Kent is a bit of a special exception here, because he only shows up in year two, so we can only give him a total of 33 gifts, but he only needs 29, so we're okay there. It's not, it's mathematically possible. But how does this all relate back to Penny and the Dwarf, right? Penny needs 57 gifts, and, and the Dwarf needs 52, which is still below this threshold, so theoretically possible. We can only afford to miss 7 gifting opportunities for Penny and 12 for the Dwarf, since both of their birthdays just happen to fall within the first, first two days of the week, so we do miss out on two gifting opportunities because of when their birthdays fall. This is not good math, I beg to differ. <laughs> if we marry Penny, the two gifts per week cap is changed to one gift per day, mis mitigating this issue somewhat. So, one of our goals is probably gonna have to be to marry Penny. And I'm sorry to Haley, I'm sorry to all the Haley stands and the Krobus stands. I wish I could go a different way, but I think that's gonna have to be where we land in this one. <laughs> However, with the dwarf, it's still kind of problem problematic. 
Thankfully, we don't require the Dwarves Translation Guide in order to fill in the Dwarves Gift Log, so we can begin gifting the moment we access this cave. That is one of very few boons that we get in this whole thing, is that I thought that we were going to have to get the Dwarves Translation Guide to even, like, start filling in any of that. You can give him gifts before you get that, and it will fill in the gift log. I tested it myself, but you just won't get any, like, friendship points for it, I don't think. So it's kind of weird. But it does, it does work, I promise. What that does mean, though, is that we will need to find four unique artifacts. You can put a little asterisk next to that per week for the majority of this challenge. They don't have to necessarily be four unique artifacts, but they have to be unique to the villager that we're giving them to. So they have to be unique for Pe two unique ones for Penny and two unique ones for the dwarf. It's not impossible. It's vi it's just very very hard. <laughs> it's just very difficult. And to make matters worse. Like, there's still more. There's still more. You thought this was it? There's more to worry about. And what more is there to worry about? I'm so glad you asked. It's, um... Uh, hold... Wait, this is, from, this is from my personal collection. Hold on. I don't know how this got in here. I'm sorry about this. Sorry. So sorry. Um, okay. And then there, then there's the wizard, right? Okay. Then there's the wizard. So to complicate things further, the wizard has all 41 geode-exclusive minerals as like gifts, too. So, not only do we have to get all the artifacts, we have to get every mineral from geodes. We can duplicate the Amusing Crystallariums in order to get one for the wizard and one for the museum, so it's not so bad. We don't have to get, like, multiples to unlock Krobus as well. But we will need to obtain at least one of each mineral in addition to every artifact. I don't know what you guys are laughing about. I don't know what you, <laughs> what you guys are laughing about. <laughs> What do you mean we need to talk, Leap a lot? I don't know. Well, there, there will be time for questions, comments, and concerns at the end of the presentation. Please hold all uh, all discourse until then. Anyway, so yeah, the wizard, not as bad as Penny and the dwarf, still kind of a problem though. Plus there's like everything else too. Like we got kind of wrapped up in this whole artifact and the minerals thing. There's also everything else. So you got to access Ginger Island ASAP to unlock Leo, the island resort, and the walnut room. You also need cheese crop quest at least once for the chief fruit, right? You gotta befriend the following villagers enough for them to send you recipes. That includes Sandy, Linus, Caroline, Shane, Pam, Marnie, Emily, Clint, Evelyn, Demetrius, Willie, Louis, George, Leo, Pierre, and Jody. We need to get the most of them to seven hearts, some of them only to three hearts. Um, many of the recipes they provide can be sourced from the Stardrop Saloon or Krobus' Saturday stock if we get lucky, though, so there's a little bit of a windfall there, I think. We do need to grow and acquire all the necessary ingredients for every dish we need to cook. That's not going to be as... I mean, compared to the artifacts, that's like nothing, basically. Ten villagers have all eggs as well in their light gifts, so we need enough chickens, ducks, and ostriches in order to accommodate that. The one exception is an item you may not have even heard about or known existed in Stardew Valley. The golden egg technically counts, but the earliest you can obtain it is spring one of year three, so they'll be omitted from the challenge. That's the reason I'm telling myself anyway. I mean... The real reason is, do you actually expect me to do perfection to unlock golden chickens in the midst of collecting three copies of every artifact as well? By the way, similar goes for the nine villagers who like all milk, so we need some goats and cows in here as well. There's also like truffles and stuff, so we'll need pigs. It's, it's going to be a whole big thing. And we need enough money to facilitate all of this, which is going to be, you know, its own big thing. So, that's a lot. Like, this slide on its own is enough to, to scare people. Combined with the previous rest of the presentation, it's a little... It's a little scary. It's a little daunting of a challenge, but I'm here for it. I'm here to try it. Um, that concludes my presentation. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns? Questions, comments, or concerns. If giving gifts all day takes time. <laughs> The PowerPoint is making my head hurt. The exclamation point info, you can reference this PowerPoint in, in, at your own speed if you'd like to, you know, dissect it yourself. What were those pictures? I don't know what you're talking about. I have no I have no recollection of any pictures other than the little, you know, pictures in the slides here. Concerns, deep breath. <laughs> you're, con you're concerned for my well-being. Hey, great cheesy egg sandwich. Thank you for being a member for seven months at the Electron tier. You have concerns for my health? It, it's fine. I've searched through 5,000 garbage cans looking for a single cactus fruit. This is no big deal. 
At least I'll be able to spend money however I like in this challenge. How do you think of these challenge? Uh, they come to me in my sleep usually. Like I'll be, well not usually in my sleep, but like I'll be like lying awake before I go to sleep and I'll just like be thinking Stardew Valley thoughts and I'll be like, ooh, that'd be a fun one. Did I factor in the drop chances for artifacts? I'm going to be relying on artifact troves for a lot of stuff. I've got, I'm, it's, look, I'm not saying it's a done deal. I'm not saying I'm, this is going to be a successful attempt at this challenge. I, what I am saying is I'm going to give it my best effort. It came to me in a dream. There's like no way you're going to be able to do this first try. That's where we put it up to a poll. Start poll. Will we succeed in this challenge? First try. Implying that there may be subsequent tries if I fail, but I don't know about that yet. <laughs> Ask your community. Perfect speedrun category? Hmm, yes. Just what I've always wanted. Speedrunning trying to get every artifact twice. So it's time to finish. The, the, the funny thing is, we're not actually going to even finish the museum, probably. Because, like, all the artifacts we're going to give to other people. Like, I think we're, we've are we got to prioritize giving artifacts. The flowchart goes, like, give the artifacts to the dwarf, give the artifacts to Penny, then give the artifacts to the... Uh, to the museum if we happen to find a third one. If you're feeling rough for the timing, would you could consider extending it to year three? Um, I think it's going to depend how close I get by the end of year two. Like, if I'm nowhere near done by the end of year two, I might just be like, all right, well, I mean, you know what? I'll probably still see it through no matter what. I would like, to, I would like it to be at least close to being done by the end of year two, but... You know, exclamation point optimism and all that. I do understand that the numbers aren't working in my favor here. However, 68% people do believe that we can pull this off. Believers rise up. <laughs> I believe in you, Argon, but uh... <laughs> yeah, you know what, Noel? That's, that uh is extremely justified. Gonna have to rewatch from the beginning. Exclamation point info if you want the slideshow to peruse at your own leisure. I think that's exclamation point info as well. But... Um, yeah. Year two is our baseline. Any extra days add to the score. Yeah, ex any extra days are just, like, we'll call them, like, shame days or something. Not Shane, but shame with an M. Days of shame that we could not complete the challenge in a timely, timely manner. <laughs> Believers and Canadians rise up. Well, I think, I mean, I think we've covered pretty well all of our bases here. I think it's time to play the game. I've been putting it off long enough. We're all we're already like 20 plus minutes into the stream. I am a little scared. Okay, maybe a lot scared. How many shame days? <laughs> Hopefully zero. All right. I mean, the one bright side to this, right, is that as opposed to having to like scour the traveling cart for many different things or go to the saloon for so many different things and having to like rely on those now we just have to rely on getting all the artifacts so i guess we've just moved the rng to like a different place and probably like a way worse place than the original stipulations of this challenge i didn't really think about that but it's fine <laughs> resetting days allowed i think we could probably reset days are we playing as Cole or Chloe? I think we're going to go Chloe. I don't think the pink cake from our mom that was the reason we may have been playing as a male character previously is going to matter this time. We can actually get the recipe for pink cakes this time. Am I going for Community Center or Joja? Um, That's a great question. I mean, we have to get to G Ginger Island as soon as possible. I think it depends on how much money I can make in a short amount of time. Which I'm not like that good at making money. I'm not that adept at it. I looked into some things and like strategy and how to make money, but I don't say that I don't I mean I don't know. Joja for sure. Yeah, probably Joja, huh? <laughs> the one thing that I will say is that the crystallarium that you get from the twenty five thousand gold bundle is kinda tempting because remember we need at least we need some crystallariums in order to 
duplicate the things for the wizard so we can like donate a mineral to the museum and give one to the wizard. That's kind of tempting, as, as opposed to having to get to like level eight or nine mining and get and build them myself. Although level, maybe that's not so hard to hit. We'll see. Either way, I think the very beginning of this challenge is going to be extremely important. Like starting off on the right foot is going to be of the utmost importance. Get rewards and go quick. Yeah. easier to get money. We'll see. I'm going to rely, rely on some of your uh, suggestions and guidance as we go through this challenge together. And uh, hopefully it's not a total train wreck. Alright, I'm going to end this poll. 72% do believe we will get this very first try. I'm with you. And I'm going to try not to disappoint you here. Okay, let me actually get Stardew Valley loaded up in this case. A hot second here. Uh, I want to switch this, I think, right? Maybe. I'm a, I'm a professional streamer, I promise. Okay, I think I'm here. Let's go into the game. Will this challenge be made into a video or no? Uh, undecided. Undecided at this time. I wouldn't be surprised if it did make a, end up being made into like, maybe not like a super comprehensive deep dive video like I'm doing for some of my other challenges, but just, you know, a little video can be fun. All right, let's, uh, let's start off easy. Let's start off with what I know I can do. I know I can make Chloe. I know I can make Chloe. I've done it many times before. We got to pick the right shirt. Where's that holiday shirt that I used in like the thumbnail? I'm pretty sure you can select that from character creation here. Oh, is that the one? We'll go with that. Pop clips video, potentially. It'll just a little highlight reel, something like that. Alright, I do like the, the pants color there. Alright, eye color. Go a little 55, 75. That's enough. 25. Air color, 92. 89. 18. Cool. Pants color, uh, we gotta match that shirt, so we're gonna go with the nice, you know, sort of saturated red. Brighter, maybe? I like it. Vibe with that. Chloe. Argon's live. Welcome, Mushi Ginko. Okay. Uh, we're not gonna be inputting any kind of seed here. I don't think, I mean, if we're going to be going Joja in theory, I think that's the general consensus is that we want to go Joja. So, like, guarantee year one completable, remix bundles, none of that really matters, does it? Holiday, Chloe. Favorite thing, friendship. All right. Uh, what's the farm's, what, okay. This is something I'd really have been humming and hawing about. What farm layout to go with? Hear me out. I think there's a case to be made for the hilltop farm. There's going to be a lot of mining going into this challenge. We need to, we're going to need like lots of Omni Geodes, which I don't think you can actually get from the hilltop farm. But there's going to be like, a, I mean, having access to Geodes and things and extra minerals, I think it could be a nice boon. I don't think the beach farm is a great idea. The supply crates have some interesting options, but none of them are really like necessary here. Four corners I also thought about. Yeah, beach farm isn't worth it in this case. I, I love you, beach farm. I have a soft spot in my heart for you forever and always, but today, this is not your challenge. Farming is hard here in the hilltop farm. Hilltop is your favorite, so it has that going for it. Fair enough, purple. Hilltop has a bad layout. There's like no space on hilltop. Four corners, then? Do we feel? How do we feel about four corners? Or do we go... We could just go standard. Standard could be interesting, too. Wilderness is, like, not half bad. There, there's pros and cons. You know what? I, I'm seeing a lot of love for four corners. I've never played a four corners farm. You know what? First time for everything. Four corners it is. All right. 
Skip intro, please. We don't need any of that. Your fi your name, your farm. What is the name of the farm? See, this is... Oh, no. <laughs> my creativity. I have to stretch my brain muscles. What is the name of this farm? This is going to be... This is going to be... A holiday farm. Why not? Nice and simple. This is a holiday farm. Favorite thing? Uh, generosity. Take it. That's a, that's a certified rarity moment right there. Okay. Chloe, holiday farm. Favorite thing is generosity. Imbib is there. Chloe's there in her holiday fit. Four corners farm. No seed. Skip intro. I think we're ready to get into it, aren't we? I think we're here to do. I think we're. I think we're good to go. This song triggers my fight or flight every time because of the no level up video. This is like it's a it's a banger song. Great moment in that video too. All right. Before I get into this, what are, what are my goals on day one? Every, everyone knows the first day is so important. I just got to like clear out the area in front of my farm. Is that like the main thing? Like just get a bunch of wood, plant my parsnip. I should probably go and buy. Well. Do I need to buy? How, do I do I need to buy any? Cr what what crops should I buy? I guess is the is the real question there. The pumped music. Got a lot of work ahead of me. What crops should I buy? I, if I'm going, if I was gonna go community center, I would buy like the spring crops. But I don't think we're gonna do that. I think we're just gonna like laser focus money. Buy good crops for money. Potatoes. Look at forage. I need to gift. I'm not super concerned about that right now. Here's the thing. A lot of the stuff that we need, we're, we, since we have, we're going through two years now, I don't need to worry as much about like forage and ingredients and that sort of thing early on because I can always come back to that in year two. Those things will come back around, right? So in, at the start of this, I think I need to focus on like just making as much progress as humanly possible, getting to the desert for artifact troves, getting to Ginger Island, get, finding as many artifacts and stuff as I can. How do I want to make money in spring? I was thinking of going with like strawberries. I mean, I should probably I need I need money to get to buy the strawberries. But I was thinking we start out the fir first day we probably plant all our crops, parsnips, whatever. Um we use all our energy to clear like trees and stuff, make some chests, whatever. Make a scarecrow even, who knows. And then we go and once we're out of energy, we go like around and forage stuff. We could probably go to buy some potato seeds. Might be the way to go. Fruit bat might might be better for gifts. Uh, I don't think so because the well the the gifts those the fruit bat fruit uh the fruit in the fruit cave, they are good gifts but they're universal likes which is not required for this challenge. Potatoes. Ever many people are saying potatoes. Many people are saying this. All right. Each is for Robin. That's true. That is true. That's a good point. All right. And and oranges for Gus. I'm pretty sure. All right. We're going to get into it. Enough wasting time. Enough dilly-dallying. My progress has been saved. What the? That's so bright. I was not ready. <laughs> I'm not used to this cabin layout at all. I do that. Take care of the important stuff first. Okay, it's been a hot minute since I've actually sat down and played Stardew Valley the proper way. I've done a lot of, like, gathering footage and stuff for, like, B-roll for my upcoming video, but actually playing Stardew Valley proper? No way, Jose. I also don't have animation canceling on, so... Yikes. Kind of cringe, honestly. Yeah, we can, we can always buy the fruit trees. Especially in year two, we don't need to worry about that so, super muchly. Although, what fruit trees grow in the spring? A good question. Or what, like, what bear fruit in the spring? Because we, well, actually, it doesn't matter because we'll be on Ginger Island anyway. And the greenhouse and stuff. Time loss, time loss, time loss. Set your house on fire. I don't think that's a great start to the challenge, to be perfectly honest with you, but I think your heart's in the right place. You got the passion there. 
apricot and cherry. Yeah, I don't. It shouldn't matter because of uh, like ginger island and. Well, actually, can you even grow fruit trees on ginger island? Yeah, you totally can. You totally can. He says confidently when he's only 80% confident. What's the verdict on how to handle Kent? We've kind of reconfigured the challenge. So Kent should be just another villager now. It's, we're going for full two years, but we're going for all liked and loved gifts in addition, instead of just love gifts. So exclamation point info if you want uh, more information. There's a whole little PowerPoint presentation neatly formatted if you're if you're curious. Yeah, the greenhouse too will make a make a big difference for sure. As far as like fruit trees and stuff goes. Right. I'm so nervous. I feel like like I like the price of perfection, I could kinda take my time, like banter with chat, do all sorts of like fun, silly stuff. This one, I have to make every single moment count. I have to, like every single moment of every single day feels like it cannot go to waste. And I know that's like I'm you know, maybe a bit of hyperbole there. Like, I can certainly waste a little bit of time. In fact, I'm sure I already have. But at the same time, it's, you know, <laughs> a little intimidating. How do speedrunners do it, man? I would never be cut out for, like, you know, a multi-hour long speedrun. We got 10 energy. I, I just wanted to see if I could get, yeah, a piece of coal there. Oh, I didn't, I didn't freaking plant my parsnips. I'm crazy. I'm crazy like that. I'm going to need to get some energy somehow. It's okay. It's all good. Um, already throwing. Go ahead and leave that right there. All this in here. Buy seeds today. I do. I need. I need energy to plant things and water them. I totally like forgot about that. And I need a. Uh, I need a scarecrow. Oh, I can't build a scarecrow. I'm dumb. It's, I need level one farming to build a scarecrow. <laughs> okay. Save some energy for planting crops. Too late for that one, unfortunately. I can go find some forage to refill my energy, though. So let's uh, let's not dilly dally. Let's go. Let's go through the backwoods. There's sometimes like forage back there, right? Reset, reset. <laughs> I'm not resetting the first day, chat, alright? I'm not resetting the very first day of the challenge. That would just be so shameful. Get some spring onions. Spring onions for energy might be the play. Currently perusing. Perusing for forage. I, I, it's not, you know, it's not the best look. Be looking for forage on day one. Doesn't seem like much is gonna be accomplished here. What am I doing today? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm so mind flooded. I need to get I need to buy some crops. I could buy I can go buy a salad. I could buy a single salad. I don't know if that's worthwhile. That's like 220 gold or something like that. Hello, Abigail. Hello, Pierre. Potato seeds. Do I just spend this all on 10 potatoes? Sell flowers to Pierre. I could sell flowers to Pierre. You're not wrong. Daffodil gives zero energy, yeah. First gift. I also need to... I, ha I do have a spreadsheet on the side here of, like, who needs what gifts and that sort of thing. I know daffodil is a pretty common liked gift. All flowers and beans. Many people were saying potatoes. Daffodil for Haley. As much as I want to, Haley only has like five gifts I need to give her. I can I can leave her for a little later. <laughs> beans. I see some people saying beans. Potatoes are ideal for future strawberries. I'm not even gonna think about it. We're just we're buying all the potatoes. Buying all the potatoes. I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna sell a daffodil and be on my way. I need beans for recipes. That'll come. To, that'll come later. We're thinking too far ahead. We're thinking too far ahead. I know I need to cook a bean hot pot eventually. 
It's an awfully hot bean pot. Hello, Penny, the nemesis of this challenge, the arch enemy of, uh, of all things gifting. Why do you... It's very cute for her character, don't get me wrong, that, like, she likes all the artifacts and stuff, but also, can you be a little more decisive? Making things very difficult for me, personally. Ooh, dandelion. That's energy, right? A dandelion. Oh, hello. I'm that new farmer, right? Yeah, and she's too involved with the camera. That's fair. That's... All right, some dandelions. A little spring onion. Some people, I think, like spring onions as uh, gifts. Like, I think maybe Linus and Demetrius. Oh my gosh, the spring onion. Great. It's a great harvest. All right, I think we might be okay. Depending on how much energy I actually need to plant all this stuff. Plant and water. I think we'll be okay. Ooh, see a horseradish? Horseradish spotted out of the corner of my eye. All right. In a good state. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Nowhere has that been truer than in this challenge. Especially because we're going to have to, like, marry Penny. Like, what the heck? I did marry Penny as my very first, uh spouse, like, ever in Stardew Valley when I was just playing casually. Looking for a little more forage. So I do have a soft spot in my heart for Penny, but she's gonna, like, test my patience here for sure. Alright, I think we're in a good spot here. Zella! Zella B! What thank you bringing of her member for six months at the Positron level? Has it already been half a year? Here's the half a year of amazing content. Thanks for doing funky Stardew thing, Argon, and for making such a wonderful community. Thank you for being a, such a wonderful member of this wonderful community. Argon, love to you. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm, my brain is broken, though. The layout of the Four Corners farm is something I have never really seen in great detail or experienced myself. I'm gonna have to be. I'm gonna have to get acquainted with this. All right. Here we go. Let's eat some dandelions. No, no, don't eat the dandelions. Eat the spring onions first. They're the same. Oh, the dandelions are a bit, bit more empty. I think we're going to need to eat at least five of these, probably more, but let's be conservative with it. What am I doing today? Exclamation point info. Deads. Dead Z. Or dead Z. If you are curious at all. But the long and the short of it is that we're giving a lot of gifts to a lot of people. Alright, so that's... that's... It. I lost track. I lost count. I'm just gonna start planting things. Start planting. Okay. And I'm gonna need four more spots. Alright, crisis... Averted. What's this summer music doing in my springtime, though? Go ahead and eat some extra stuff here. Go a little baby moonlight jelly. Congratulations. Those are rare. I don't think we've had another... We've had two green moonlight jellies from exclamation point jelly. Like, in stream history. I don't think we've had more than that since then, though. Not planting mixed seeds. You know what? That's a good shout-out. There's no reason not to plant these mixed seeds. The parsnip right there. And another parsnip right there. Not the most exciting result. All right, we should be able to water the rest of these. Right? Oh, it's like it's perfectly been planned. Okay. What do I do now? Should I go and... I can go and just, like, meet people, I guess. You know, let's go check. It's, it's not, it's probably not going to matter, is it? I could, I was going to say, let's go check the dish of the day, if we want to be sad, I guess, because we can't afford it. Get the most mixed seeds from the upper left quadrant of this farm, if I'm looking for more. You know what, that might not be a bad way to spend time. Thank you, Leap a lot. Let's go get some, let's go see if we can find some more mixed seeds. Upper left, because that's the, I assume that's the one that has, like, the little forest doohickeys. The little weeds that are usually unique to the forest farm, right? You know, I should actually... I'm going to go ahead and eat 
another spring onion mate. Actually, keep the spring onions on me. Keeps the MF and things on him. Alright, two spring onions. Not great. Hold on to it for right now. Four Corners Farm. Chat was very much in favor of the Four Corners Farm, and I can uh, I can absolutely see why. I just don't want to, like, accidentally swing my pickaxe and be, like, exhausted. Something like that. I should also check out the bottom of the farm. For potential, um, like, geode nodes and stuff, maybe? For, like, mining opportunities, whatever might be down there. seed action right there. And you know, I can theoretically... Like, I think, I think I'm gonna have to... There's gonna be a lot more passing out than we're used to in this challenge, I'm pretty sure, because I need to run these days as long as possible. So I'm gonna be passing out at 2 a.m. a significant portion of the time, which means I probably want, like, not as much money on me as possible, or want to, want to have as little mo money on me as possible when I do pass out, at least, like, in the early parts of this challenge. So that I'm not losing a lot. But I want to I want to squeeze every single moment I can out of these days. People are loving the frog. You know what? I can't I can't be mad about it. Have a good one there, creating bow. I'm feeling fibrous farm flashbacks right now, just slashing all this fiber. Fiber farm is quaking right now. You're so right. All right, let me go have a look down here at the little... Because I know there's like a little baby quarry, right? On the Four Corners farm. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, this is the good stuff. This is the good stuff. This is what we're talking about. It takes three swings to, to break that. That's not ideal. I did find a geode, though. Uh, okay, we're still all right. I also see an artifact spot. First artifact spot acquired. I, I do need to eat this spring onion, though. I left a mixed seed. I will hopefully be able to find it on the way back. I'm starting to feel exhausted, but I need this artifact. S3 clay. Not great. There is a strategy where you can, like... Can I... I don't think I can mine that. Don't just take, take like, five hits. I'll mine this one. There's, like, a strategy where you can reset the day to, like, reset artifact spots. I think. I don't know if we're going to be doing that too, too much in this challenge, but... Get copper. The copper will still be there in the morning. I will consume a single dandelion in order to plant these mixed seeds. That was not great. <laughs> Three, four, five, six. Okay. I need 12 energy to water these, so we should be alright. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. It's great. Get copper for furnace. That's a good call. I mean, I should, I should, I do need the furnace recipe ASAP. Um, do, is there anything left to do here? Let's gather a little more forage. More forage. I see that's a leak. That leak is huge. 40 energy right there. Also a good gift. Some people. Have a good one, Noel. Thank you for uh, hanging out for a little bit here. You can get over 100 in a week of the copper from that little quarry down there. That would be, that would be awesome. If that is actually factually true. Go to the saloon and just, like, meet some people real quick. Might as well. All the friendly faces. It's been so long, my friends. I'm, we're gonna get very well acquainted, don't you worry. Especially you and me, Gus. Someone had a great idea in the comments of, like, the planning uh, stream. 
Ooh, double fish taco. That would that would have been great for some gifts, but a thousand each, so no thanks. <laughs> Someone had a great idea to get a phone in order to like call Gus so that I don't have to like go and actually check the daily specials. Which even though daily specials are not as important now, I think it'll still be a nice idea to have that sussy gussy. Ooh, I do see... There's an artifact spot here. Is it worth it? I think it's worth a dandelion. Don't water the artifact spot. <laughs> Come on, now. I know we're flustered, but that's just silly. Check the trash? Should have checked the trash, that's true. Is there a good spot to refill my watering can? There is one down here, okay. Little out of the way, but not so, so terrible. All right, you know what? Let's let's commit to it. Let's, if if I'm gonna be passing out, we're gonna pass it on the very first day as well. I should level up my foraging. I'm pretty sure from all the trees I chopped down. I think we'll be okay. You know, let's go get let's go get that copper. Why not? About a hundred spring onions, not copper. I see. Said that in a very superintendent Chalmers way. Oh, this is only, these are only three. I, for some reason, I thought these were five to break these. All right there. Yeah, I should check, to, I should check spring onions basically every day, I think, in order to maximize energy efficiency there. Forget how dark it gets in the beginning. This is very dark, yeah. I'm so used to having my light rings and stuff. Even just like a small glow ring. Like, look at these little, look at these logs. They're like straight, like, like Vanta black, darkest black known to humankind. No light can escape its grasp. All right, get ready. We're gonna pass out in a second. Frog, last minute frog for good luck. I think that frog just blessed this run. I'm, I'm feeling suddenly much more confident. No extra mixed seeds out of the deal, but we're all right. Go oh, level one foraging, we'll take it. Okay. There's Clint. We get our little furnace recipe. No time for you, Clint. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. Uh, I do need water. All of you. All of you. And then we can go get our fishing rod. Is today a fishing day? I think fishing might be the meta, right? Like, there's not a whole lot else I can really do. So I go fishing to make money. Mixed seed was in the top left corner. Thank you. I'll go have a look. See you in a bit, Jay Nuggets. Thank you for tuning in. Okay. Fill this little watering can here. I should get a chest to have with me while fishing. That much I know. I'm not that much of a noob. I don't need well, this. Don't need this. This. Uh, actually, I don't need like any of this. I'll keep the hoe for artifact spots, maybe. I don't know who saved me. I don't know who saved my life, but thank you. <laughs> there was a there was a message in there about uh, like bring like dragging my corpse back to my bed and stealing three gold from my pocket. said there's mix yeah there is there is a mixed seat up here right you right another baby moonlight jelly big respect All right another mixed seed right here now let's go like fishing Maybe I'll go grab spring onions first. Spring spring onion PR, PJR, pickle jar rag spam in chat. P 
EJR. The pet's water dish is far away on this farm. So true. Exclamation point Haley as well. She says I she says we hope she hopes we win this year. Yo, Haley's on our side. Even though we're planning on marrying Penny. The ultimate betrayal. That's what makes Haley so great. She's just so understanding. You might not think of it from the first time you talk to her and she says that your shoes look like plastic, but she's got a heart of gold. Beautiful. I come back to trash can PTSD. <laughs> That sound is kind of embedded in all our brains, isn't it? Why Penny? Because Penny, we have to give many, many, many gifts to. And uh, in order to bypass the two gift per week limit, marriage is the only option. She does blatantly ignore you sometimes, but it's because she's so focused on her the task at hand. Oh, Vincent, get over here. I need to meet you. Imagine that. Someone runs up behind you. He's like, stop right there. I need to meet you. That's that's how you know you've met a best friend for life. All right, Willie, thank you for the bamboo pole. Appreciate it. Should I fish on the beach here? Or should I fish on the like in like the lake or something? Also, is this a good spot for a chest? I don't know if people walk there. Probably not. I think we're fine to just fish right here and like go and... Like, I know there there is some value to fishing in the lake as opposed to here. But I think this is totally fine. So fishing is really good for money in the early game, right? Like, you, you catch the fish, you save all the fish until you've reached at least level 5, preferably level 10. You can sell them for maximum dollars. Do I have that right? Also, a very cursed inventory setup right here. That looks like a danger spot for the chest. I can I can move it. Not off to a great start there. The green bar is so little. There's like a map on the wiki that shows... Uh, like what spots are good and what spots are not what spots are not good for chests. Can we confirm that that spot I have the chest in right now is or is not good? It would be good information to have. Yo, a flounder? That's a light gift for Sebastian. I remember that. That was weirded out by it. I can, I can actually get the iridium rod this time. I don't know if I will. I'm kind of attached to the bamboo pole, not gonna lie. Makes me feel a certain kind of way. To have the option is pretty nice. If you fish here, you don't actually need the chest. You can sell directly to Billy. True. True. I can just like... Well, although I don't get them... Well, I'm going to need early money a little bit, right? Like, sell, selling some fish early on can't be that bad, because I'm going to need some early money for, like, to buy some salads and stuff, maybe, for good energy purposes, to, like, get through the mines better. Maybe that's a strat. I have to sell to Willy before 5 p.m., is that right? Going to sell. Two to the right, right outside the door. Okay, I got it. I'll move the chest. Wait, I don't have an axe to, like, pick up the chest. I could, like, bump it around, though. No, get... Oh, oh, you can just hoe a chest? Today I learned you can use a hoe to pick up a chest in Stardew Valley? Who knew? Certainly not me. I've got over a thousand hours in the game, and I've never tried that. It's never even crossed my mind. Is that new spot safe? I just took it on blind faith because I saw one person say it in chat. And who would go on the internet and lie?
just punch the chest. That's fine? Okay, good to know. Thank you, thank you for the intel. Don't really care for that seaweed. Seaweed is... Actually, seaweed might be a like... I think, I think Leia likes seaweed, maybe? Either way, neither here nor there. Punch chest like King Kong. King Kong kind of beats his chest. He doesn't really punch his chest. It's a very, it's a very slight difference, but I think the difference is notable. Leia likes driftwood. You don't know about seaweed. I, I remember the driftwood. Because I remember getting strangely fixated on that during the Price of Perfection. I had like a hundred driftwood saved in chests for some reason. Because I was like, Leia likes driftwood. I can't throw it away. And I like never gave any to her. Gotta go for that chest right there. Got it. I just gotta salvage this catch. Not a difficult fish. It's a nice, nice slow mover. This could be our first artifact. This could be big. Fishing is a great way to get artifacts. I know that. That's just coal. But you know what? Coal is a valuable resource in and of itself. So it's fine. Only I say Leia like Princess Leia. That's how her name is pronounced. I asked her. Personally. I think I did look this up one time. Like, Leia is, like, a way that that name can theoretically be pronounced. I don't know. Has Concerned Ape ever come out and, like... Like, I know he's very hesitant to canonically state a pronunciation for Mr. Chi. But has he ever, like, confirmed that... He, does he say Leah? Say so. I did the research. I crunched the numbers. I promise. Santa gave me this coal because I haven't gifted anything yet. Valid point, honestly. I think after this catch, I'm gonna go sell some stuff to Willy. I think some of these might be better saved as energy for the mines. Because we're going to need to make, like, a beeline through the mines, I feel like. But having all the energy possible, I think it's going to be important. Alright, um... That said, 125 gold for this flounder. Yes, please. I remember reading somewhere that, like, better to sell, like... How much? Do I want to sell the higher quality ones, or do I want to save them for energy? I feel like I might save them for energy. I'm not gonna, gonna be honest with you. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's two salads right there, and we save and we save these herrings for some energy, or potentially to sell later for more stuff. I don't know why I'm doing it like this. Is it... That's three potatoes. That is three potatoes, or two salads. Actually, it's more than three potatoes. Less than, like, 39 potatoes. Wait, no. I'm crazy. I thought potatoes were 10 gold each for some reason. They're not. They're 50. Ooh, perfect catch. Love to see it. A little gold quality sardine. 23 energy. Excuse me, Willy. Kind of invading my personal space, buddy. Couldn't have stepped. <laughs> you had to take that exact path to that spot. I thought he was gonna fish here. So I was like, "Oh my bad, Mister." And then he like, <laughs> and then I move out of the way, and he sidesteps me. Kind of rude, honestly. Most fish scale in energy restoration faster than they scale in sail value. That is what I was trying to remember. Leap. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. I definitely read that tip somewhere. 
and I wasn't sure if I was just making things up in my brain. That was just pure copium on my part. Good to know that it is uh, valid information. Spider-Man meme if I ever seen one. We're even both wearing the same red shirt. Well, not the same red shirt, but a red shirt. Mark my words, these fishing treasures are going to be a godsend. We get our first artifact, everyone's going to go crazy. Bait? Probably don't really need that. Deposit. Deposit all this. We'll keep that. Uh, that for right now. Honestly, deposit like everything. Just we'll sort it out later when we're heading when we when we head home. Right now I'm just trying to think, is there anything else I should be doing? I think spending as much time as I can fishing right now is pretty... It's, it's okay. It's a, it's a good way to spend my time because it is a good moneymaker early on until the mines open up. One thing about the mines, I don't think we can afford to wait for, like, good luck days at the mines. Can I make... Can I hit those bubbles? Not really. Maybe if I fish, like, left and try to angle down or something, might be able to hit them. No, not quite. Been, like, that perfect spot. Unless I... Oh, unless I do something crazy. What if I go, like... A little, nope, sorry. Okay, the bubbles are gone, so you know what? Never mind. I was gonna try to, like, fish past Willy. They say never to cross the streams, but I don't know if that has a, if that was in relation to fishing. This is a PG-13 stream. I don't know what's going on in chat. I didn't see some people, you know. <laughs> don't, th don't think my mind didn't go there as well, but you know, it is a PG-13 stream. All right. Ooh, halibut. Wait a second. Okay, we're still good. A little Joja Cola. Sippy Sippy. Honestly, sip the other Joja Colas as well. It is a like gift for Sam, but we can always just go and buy one. Not concerned. Also, seaweed's probably better served as energy than anything else right now as well. Any source of energy I can get my my clammy little hands on, I think I'm gonna have to hold on to it for right now. Need better quality fish than this? This literal trash out of my face. Saltwater soda. Oh, driftwood. Let's go. Gift for Leia. Just on the off chance that we never see another piece of driftwood again, we'll save it. It is kind of a weird thing that you just find full can, full unopened cans of Joja Cola in the ocean, right? Ooh, this could be an eel. Eel? It, it feels vaguely eel-like. No, actually, I think this is, might be a flounder. Might not be an eel. No, that's a halibut. I don't really remember halibut being so dexterous. I am indeed doing liked gifts as well. Loved and liked gifts. All loved and all liked non-universal gifts. The name of the 
the game. Willie, you can just go, okay? It's fine. <laughs> Nobody's stopping you. I don't know why you have to take such a specific path. Celery soda? Isn't celery just like 90% water anyway? Are you just drinking sparkling water at that point? With a hint of, of greeny goodness? Asani water has salt in it. Always wondered a little bit about that. Like you look in the ingredients for some bot for most bottled water, and it's all they've got salt in it. My mind always goes to like the horrible dystopian future idea of like, hey, are they putting salt in the water so that I buy more water? Ooh. Artifact spot. Oh my goodness, do you see these artifact spots? Dried starfish! Yo! The first possible gift. And the lost book. We gotta get him out of the way at some point, so you know what? I'm not even that mad. The stone. So we wanna give this dried starfish, preferably to the dwarf. I wanna get to the dwarf, like, as soon as humanly possible. If I could get to the dwarf by, like, getting a cherry bomb as a drop from a monster on, like, the 5th of, uh, spring, I'd be pretty happy with that. I'm gonna buy some salads. I don't care what anybody says. I only got one salad of- uh, you know, that's fair. That's how math works, I guess. Lost books will be so helpful in this run. Oh, I'm sure. All right, let's do a little little perusing for some for potential forge p possibilities, more artifact spots. I know how forge works that it like resets at the end of like every week, but what about artifact spots? Do they are they a daily occurrence or is, are they more weekly as well? Never, I probably should have looked into that before, since I knew the artifact intensity levels of this challenge going into it. Linus? Linus likes spring onions. I'm like 90% sure. Just let me check my spreadsheet, though. I, just, I, I need to give a gift to somebody. Spring onion? Linus likes spring onions, confirmed. Going in. Excuse me? My, my stardew? Going in. Enjoy a nice little midnight snack, Linus. I can't give it to him because he's asleep? What kind of nonsense is this? I don't think I've ever seen the sleeping Linus sprite. Hello. Alright. Guess I can't do that. <laughs> Yo, wait, oh, wait. I, did I, like, close out of my chat by mistake? My bad. Never seen Linus sleep before? That's what I'm saying. That was just kind of uncanny, honestly. <laughs> Linus is vibrating. He's vibing. There's a difference. Enjoy your lurking. Yo, it's been a while. Can we get some sevens from our lurkers in chat? If you're lurking, you know, playing Stardew Valley, doing something else, doing homework, doing... Other kinds of work. Shoutouts to you. I'm gonna sell these clams. I think. Yeah, let's sell the clams. I know I said I should be passing out at every available opportunity, but I just feel bad sometimes. Who do we got lurking tonight? Dog dot cat, Lindsay Yang, Shane Rays, Zir, Zaniella, CP Budgie, Blasted, Marina, Zippor, lots of lurkers tonight, my goodness. They're out in full force. Sid, Jalopy. Another Rose, Addy Poke, Alyssa B. Cat. Wait, that's one of my mods. What the? Er Aramis Lampley, Hannah Hacking, Sarah Ashram, Kayla Richards, Cobalt Cryptid. Fin it, it just goes forever. I could just keep reading this. Finitar, Zella B. Rita Hearts coming in with a cheeky eight. Thank you all for the lurkers. You are the lifeblood of the stream. I love the active chatters just as much. 
Don't get me wrong, but lurkers, you know, you're you're hanging in here. I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to sleep for the night. Go a level one fishing. Take it. Playing Disney Dreamlight Valley. I need to get into that. I actually own that game, but I've, like very, I, I played it like a little tiny bit, but I just don't have time to actually get into it. I guess. All right, we're going fishing again. Don't have to water today, thankfully. You know, it saved the salad for the mines. We're on our way. Do I have anything? Why seven? It's just seven. <laughs> the real reason for why seven... I, I, I could... Weird as this might sound, I don't really know the reason why seven for, stands for lurkers. The reason that I picked it as seven is because it's something that one of my favorite streamers, Dan Giesling, uses. Or he used. I don't know if he does it as much nowadays, but he used to call out for like, can I get some sevens for my lurkers in chat? And that just stuck in my brain forever. I don't know where he got it. His brain is a, is a frightening place. But, uh... The most rationale I can put into it is that it looks like an upside-down L. <laughs> and it's better than putting L in chat, because then everyone ever... That's like the universal sign of, a, like, a loss in, in stream parlance. Would I be willing to do a subathon at like 25k subs? I've thought about, you know, like if I'd ever do a subathon at some point. And maybe in the in the distant future. Can I get an L for my lurkers? Yeah, it doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? I th maybe in the distant future at some point, but you know, right now where my life is at, I don't think I'd have I don't think I can schedule a subathon even if I wanted to. Plus, like, sometimes I'll tune into, like, Jaden Animation stuff, Subathon, and, like, it seems like she's having a great time, but it also seems like it, it wears on you at, in certain ways, so. Like, her Subathon's been going on for, like, how long now? I don't even know. Hello, Willy. Are we fishing again? The L stands for winner. <laughs> Seven is an upside-down L, so it's actually a W. I don't think W is an upside-down L, though. I'll be using upside down M. Maybe we, should, maybe we can start that trend. Maybe if maybe instead of spamming L in chat when something bad happens, we start spamming capital M instead. Because it's the, it's the upside down W. I could get behind that. Everyone else will be so confused. It'll alienate new viewers so much. They'll be like, "Why are they spamming M for this for this terrible tragedy?" I can't wait to see all the M's at the end of the giftathon when I <laughs> when I fail to to give all the all the artifacts in time. Shout out to the Merkers. <laughs> East, I thought you said weast. Where's that? I feel like that's a reference to something that I should know. What's my favorite ice cream flavor? Mint chocolate chip. And I will take no... I will brook no discourse on this topic. Mint chocolate chip is the best one. You can't change my mind. Leap a lot casually dropping a Sigma in chat. <laughs> you know what? I see it. I see it. It's, it's, he's, <laughs> he's a little confused, but he's got the spirit. Mint chocolate chip is the bomb. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. You, I mean, you know, can't all be mint chocolate chip enjoyers. Average chocolate, average vanilla ice cream enjoyer versus being chocolate chip enjoyer. Actually, I can't even hate. Vanilla ice cream is really good. Like, I think in terms of, like, favorite ice creams, it would go mint chocolate chip and then probably vanilla. Or some combination of vanilla. After that. 
And then Watermelon Lime Cooler. Kind of kind of an underdog pick for, for third best ice cream. I doubt many people have even heard of it, but it is phenomenal. Like strawberry. Strawberry is good in... If you have to be in the right mood for strawberry, I find. Like, strawberry is a nice, refreshing ice cream. Like, here's my here's my hot take of the of the day. I don't know how hot this is. It's kind of cold because it's about ice cream. But I think that if you're in the mood to enjoy strawberry ice cream, you cannot simultaneously enjoy chocolate ice cream. You can enjoy them separately in different mind states. I don't think there's a single mind state that exists in the human consciousness in all of human history that allows one to enjoy chocolate and strawberry ice cream at the same time. They're too different. Strawberry is a nice, refreshing, light taste, and chocolate is a little, little, little too heavy. You might say, like, what about... I'm sure chocolate strawberry ice cream is out there. That's its own category. It's its own subcategory. Neapolitan exists. Neapolitan is different. It's it's its own it's its own niche category. Neapolitan is the ice cream for people who can't make up their mind. And you know, I'm not even hating. Like the picky eaters of the world need ice cream too. And Neapolitan is there for you. And let me ask you this. Have you ever have you ever asked someone what's your favorite ice cream flavor and they answer with Neapolitan? No, because no one's favorite flavor is Neapolitan. It's physically impossible. Cuz it's it's like because if you enjoy Neapolitan, you probably enjoy either chocolate, strawberry, or vanilla more than Neapolitan. And the only reason that you eat Neapolitan is because it contains one of your favorites and you just eat around the other two. Or you, like, save the best for last, and you, like, eat the, other, eat the other two begrudgingly first. Like, ooh, I'm gonna have to take my, you know, chocolate and strawberry medicine before, before I can get to the dessert of vanilla. You've responded Neapolitan before? But you didn't believe it, is the thing. Neapolitan was your fave as a kid? Kids are notoriously indecisive. Like, you'll have a two-year-old, and they'll be, they'll be like, what do they want for... You'll ask them, like, what do you want for uh, for lunch? And they'll be like, I want a grilled cheese sandwich. You make the grilled cheese sandwich, and you give it to them, and then they, they throw it on the floor, and they're like, I want chocolate. Now, I can't speak from personal experience, only through anecdotes, but... Or you comp compromise with the other flavor, flavor enjoys every household. That is also a valid way to, to approach it. You got a sister who loves the strawberry and you happen to love the chocolate, then you know, more power to you. Chocolate is dessert. Not to a two year old. children of a young enough demographic, chocolate is breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snack, and dessert. They just want chocolate. I'm gonna go get a popsicle made you hungry. Fair. Fish Argon stream. Been watching through the Price of Perfection VODs. You're on number 27. Hold on, I gotta focus. I gotta listen in case I miss a, a fishing cue. Found you through the No Level Up video. Thank you very much for tuning in, um, Emily. Emily Norris. Great to have you here. I hope you've been enjoying the Price of Perfection VODs. And right now, right now this is a very chill fishing stream, honestly. I didn't anticipate things going this way, especially after the most chaotic first day ever, in my experience. 
Now I think I can honestly just, you know, enjoy my time fishing until the mines open on day five, and then then things are probably going to get a little chaotic again. Although even the mines, like, have a soothing quality to them. It's not the same as fishing, where it's like a literal one-button minigame. And there's dangers and other things to look out for in the mines, for sure. But there's a formulaicness. That's even a word to it. That will, uh... It was very soothing and comforting. Have a good one, Leap. Thanks for tuning in a little bit. I have been taking care of myself decently, I like to think. No worries. I appreciate you uh, hanging out for a bit. Take care. This is an eel 100%, by the way. Yeah, alright. We gotta, we gotta make a decision here, because I'm silly and forgot to... Let's go ahead and sell some stuff to Willy here. I'm gonna go ahead and sell all the basic ones first and foremost. Then, what do, what does our energy intake look like here? That that eel is so good for energy. These flounder are also very good for energy. I think I'm gonna sell. I'll sell the anchovies and the sardines, and we'll keep the rest. on fishing. I should level up in fishing again today, so I don't need to worry about, like, if I pass out losing too much energy. Yo! E-boss music? Can we get some B emojis in chat? Such a good song. If this is just a taste of the Haunted Chocolatier soundtrack, I'm gonna- I'm- can't wait to be blown away in the full release. I'm so amped for that game. Whenever it might come out. It could be, you know, like, next year. It could be in ten years. I don't even know. Whenever it comes out, I'm gonna be here, though. Not the bees! Should be another eel, I'm pretty sure. The more eels I can get, the happier I'll be, because that is a that is a substantial amount of energy from those eels. We need all, need all Chloe facial expression emotes. <laughs> I do need to up my emote game for my my YouTube members, for sure. I like the emotes that we currently have, but I definitely need to expand the repertoire. Also, let me know if the music is too loud or too quiet or anything like that, because I can always fiddle with that if need be. Yo, I see bubbles over there. I didn't even realize that. I don't know how long they've been going, but I might be able to make those. Oh, it doesn't quite hit it. Maybe if I like went all the way over here and fished out, I could reach it, but by the time no in my life by the time I get over there it'd just be gone anyway. Well, I don't think I hit quite max fishing distance with this cast, so maybe if I go all the- maybe if I go the full distance, I'll be able to hit these bubbles. Still didn't quite make it. Music is a nice level, good to hear, thank you. How come Stardew Festivals last from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., but then you get home at 10 p.m.? My headcanon is that they start, there's 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 a there's a legislated starting period where you're allowed to arrive between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m., and if not, then, uh, sucks to suck. 
But then the fest the festivities themselves do go all the way until 10 p.m. in my brain. Even though that's probably contradictable, because like you can go into the you probably could go into town after 2 p.m. and see people like wandering around and stuff. The real answer is, you know, parallel universes, as always. You've made a clip about M. Feel free to post it in the Discord. By the way, there is a new Discord channel. I should have mentioned this at the top. There's a Discord channel for discussion on all things um, Giftathon related. If you've got any ideas, suggestions, concerns, comments, whatever, math, anything you want to bring to the table, exclamation point Discord, or there's a link to the Discord server in the description. You can go over there, join it, and uh, and contribute over there. That's probably where we're going to be most likely to see it. Or it's going to be, like, I'll probably see it in chat if you post th something to that effect, but I'll also, might also, like, slip out of my mind by the end of the stream. Post it over there, and I'm more likely to, you know, internalize it. <laughs> You're also fishing at the same time, it's going to mess you up so much. I've had that happen too, where I'm playing Stardew Valley and I'll be like listening to a different Stardew Valley video in the background, just as like just as like ambient noise. And sometimes they'll do something in the game and it'll like throw me off because like the sound effects are the same. I wanted to say thanks. That I was partially inspired by you to start streaming your own stuff. Congratulations, Spoon Moon. I hope things are going well for you and you're having fun with it. It warms my heart to hear that I was even a partial inspiration in any capacity. More power to you. Look at this graph. I love that meme, honestly. You can change your tone. You can change the tone of your fishing rod. That is true. I've never done that, though. I don't know anyone who has. Might be worth worthwhile. Wait, am I gonna be okay? We're still fine. We're still fine. I thought I was about to be exhausted for a second. Like I don't mind passing out out here, but getting exhausted is something I cannot abide stage of my life. We'll eat some seaweed and continue fishing here. I think I am just going to fish here, honestly, until the day is done. I'm going to lose a significant portion of this gold, I think. Like, what is it, 10% or something? But honestly, you know, I can probably make, make that much money just by fishing here. Make more than that much money. What's my favorite farm type to play on? I don't know if it's like Stockholm Syndrome from the amount of time that I've played on it, but I think the beach farm is honestly really fun. <laughs> like, I get the whole, like, not being able to water your crops via sprinklers aspect is extremely off-putting to a lot of people. But I, there's something about the vibe of the beach farm and just the size, the sheer size of the beach farm is so cool. It's, it's, there's plenty of room for activities. The supply crates is a really neat mechanic, I think. I think it's laid out in a very satisfying way. You got that little island off in the top left. Yeah, I don't know if it's just the amount of time that I spent there in the Price of Perfection challenge, or what, but it's, uh... It has a fond place in my heart, for sure. Prior to the Price of Perfection, I probably would have said that my favorite farm layout is the, um is the forest farm. Kind of a normie answer, but you know, forest farm is really good. I, can't even, I cannot deny that. Your neighbors have a baby cow. That is so cute. Baby animals are the best. 
There's a reason they're so memeable and lovable. What are we talking about? Bikel? Mbikel? I, I feel like I missed a part of the conversation. I look over at Chad and I just see a bunch of people typing Mbikel. <laughs> For some reason, my brain can only go to Vsauce. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. Where are your fingers? Yo, I've never been here when Willy comes back. Willy will remember that. He'll remember that you were fishing all day outside of his house. I missed some stuff, apparently. People talking about fluffy cows and Michael. Hey, you guys do you. As long, as long as you're having fun in there, don't mind me. I'm just gonna be fishing here. Bee sauce Michael here. I might be opening up a can of worms that I can't close here, and it might be a PG-13 uh, stretch. I don't know, but I need to ask this question. The the letter B, right? That that emoji, like the one that Karita used, like the red letter B. When you use that to like replace the first letter of a of a word, I've seen that across the internet for many years, and I've never understood it. It seems to crop up in the most random places in in varying contexts, and I don't understand where it comes from or what it means. If it's if it's a breach of PG thirteen ness, don't explain. Explain no further than that. But otherwise, I'm here to learn. Teach this old millennial a thing or two about the internet, please. All right. I don't want. I'm gonna save that seaweed for. I'll save the seaweed for later, for next time. I think we're just gonna pass out here. Pass out on the sand at least. Make it com comfortable for the poor girl. You have no idea where it came from. You just use it for beans. Base boosted. Gotta say the B really hard. That's mainly the joke. B, b, spoken. Also old millennial, I have no idea. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Yo, level three fishing, we'll take it. I didn't lose on, lose on, that, on that much money, honestly. I need to check the TV right now, I think we're good. What I do need is a watering can, because it ain't raining today, I'll tell you that. Linus, what were you doing down at the beach, Linus? You are supposed to be asleep at that time. Your farmer Chloe, yada yada, we're good. All right. We go for spring onions again, and then I think we go fishing one more time. I know it's been kind of like, you know, just fishing simulator, the stream. But that seems to be the meta when it comes to early Stardew right now. Mid-gen X, not a clue. I'm 32 and I have no idea about any of those things. 22-year-old Gen Z here. Gen Z, sorry. I didn't even know the, the B was a thing. Just letting you know that using any emoji letters to bypass PG-13 from here rules out in the timeout. That is a good shout out, Ali. That is a that is a strategy that I've seen used that is will not be tolerated. So just you know, be careful. I'm glad that like no one seems to know. And it is actually a thing on the internet. It's not just me, right? Like, pe other people see it around, too. I I'm not just, like, crazy and happen to be in, like, the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> right, I'm going to take the pickaxe as well here. Just I'm, I'm going to head down through the southern portion of this farm to access, like, to get my spring onions and stuff. And I'll see if, I, if there's anything new in the quarry. I know the quarry restocks, like, extremely slowly. So it doesn't seem that likely to me, but worth having a look, I think. Okay, you know what? We'll take it. Censorship on TikTok so it doesn't get caught by bots. 
I don't doubt that that's a partial reason, but I feel like, I mean, maybe it's maybe it just predates TikTok because I've seen I've definitely seen it in places before TikTok. <laughs> no worries, Allie. You're do you're doing a great job. Picked you as a mod for a reason, so you. you <laughs> I d I definitely get that too. I feel the anxiety sometimes when I've I've done modding duties myself, and you know I get that exact same feeling. The Four Corners Farm is your favorite for don't leave the farm challenges. I've seen many videos of those don't leave the farm challenges. And all of them seem to have a common thread of, I can't leave the farm except for one day a year, or I can't leave the farm except on festivals, or something of that sort. Are there any videos out there where people actually just don't leave the farm? It would probably be very boring, I'm not going to deny that. Like, there's not a lot you can do with that. But at the same time, like, it's kind of in the challenge name. You're not supposed to leave the farm. What are you doing? What are you doing out there playing the egg festival? You're supposed to be at the farm. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do that as like a one-off stream sometime. All right. Um, deposit this. Anything else I need? Did I go fishing at the mountain lake this time? Just to, you know, mix things up a little bit. I'm a creature of habit. D-pad gamer did. I've seen D-Pad Gamer around. I think he does some pretty good stuff, I think. Getting a cool hat. Found a thread about it in r slash out of the loop. I feel like if I was going to ever frequent a subreddit, that would be the one I should frequent. I feel like I'm out of the loop on many things. Hello, Penny. Penny doesn't like any of this stuff, does she? She likes... She doesn't like that. Does she like daffodils or does she like dandelions? She likes one of those, but I don't remember which one. This Penny... Let me go to my Penny tab on my spreadsheet here. She likes dandelion, not daffodils. One of her liked gifts, okay. Good to know. My zodiac sign? I am a Capricorn. Don't really know what that means in terms of like astrology and that sort of stuff. Never really looked into it, but that is that is the answer. That is when I was born. December twenty-sixth. Alright, honestly, this pine cone can get yeeted. I'm, I was gonna I was thinking about maybe leaving it in the chest, but the daffodil will keep. Here though. Everything else. I mean honestly, leave the food in there. We don't need it right now, so. You just fish. Welcome back. My birthday is nearing, indeed. I'm gonna be 28. But I don't feel a day over 18, I'll tell you what. Intellectually, I know I've changed like a significant portion, a significant amount between when I was 18 and when I'm, and like today. But I feel like I've changed substantially less than the average person. I'm not like other streamers. I'm not like other people. I'm the same person I was when I was 18, for better or for worse. Welcome to the 28-year-old club. Thank you. I just need to make it to the, to the 26th of this month, and I'll be past the Club 27 thing. Although Club 27 is for, like, rock stars and stuff, right? Am I dating myself with a club? Where does Club 27 come from? Is that, I mean, it's like, the idea is that, like, Club 27 is that, like, many famous rock stars, musicians, celebrities and stuff die at the age of 27. I don't know where specifically that comes from or what examples there might be, but I'm not going to put my, myself up there in the, like, the echelons of real celebrities. So, sure, I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. 
feel like I'm about 80 right now. Hello, Lisa, by the way. Hello, hello. I'm so quirky. I'm so kawaii. Amy Winehouse, Kendricks, Kurt Cobain, Janis Joplin. I can upgrade my fishing pole now. Don't I, I need like uh, I need the money for that, right? Doesn't it, it cost two thousand? Or is it is it is it only five hundred? Well, it's, you know, there's an easy way to find out, isn't there? Training rod, fiberglass rod is eighteen hundred. I don't know if it's worth the money right now. Maybe later in the challenge when money is less of an issue, but for now, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and ride this bamboo pole as long as we can. Nothing is keeping me from spending the money, except that I need the money for other things, potentially. That's the only real, real crux problem sticking point that I'm running into right now. It is a good shout out. We'll, we'll upgrade the bamboo pole eventually, don't you worry. Takes money to make money. How's the fishing? It's going well. Uh, Gardenia, la la la, Minha, Cabesia, Piscando. I'm just going to call you Gardenia if that's okay. Great name, though. The fishing is going well. We're getting some gold starfish now. Which is very nice in terms of, you know, energy prospects. But the fishing is great. The gifting, which is, you know, like, in the name of the challenge, mm, could be going better, I'll admit that. We, haven't, we have not given a single gift yet, but our time will come. We'll go on a gift-giving extravaganza before long, but you gotta set a good foundation. As with many things in life, having a good foundation to start from is key to later success. be able to reach fishing level four today, I think, based on my, you know, knowledge of experience rates and how things go. We're not there yet, but we'll get there, I'm sure. I want Argon saying, but let's say hypothetically I was a cat, a kitty cat, kitty cat, and hypothetically I could dance, dance, dance for whatever. <laughs> Are we talking about the kitty cat dance from, from the year 2005? I, feel, I watched a strange Aeons video about that, that not that long ago. Not specifically about the kitty cat dance, but she was talking about, like, uh, like the beginnings of YouTube and the first viral videos and that sort of thing. It was a good time. Strange Aeons, decidedly not a PG-13 channel. But uh, if you're okay with that, definitely recommend her stuff. She makes uh, good content. up with a video titled Argon Matrix No Context Part 1. Why has it got to be Part 1? Is there enough? Is there, I mean, there's enough information. There's enough, like, once you make content for long enough on the internet, you can make a, a No Context compilation of just about anybody for sure. Argon Caramel Dancing. This is a weird leap in logic for my brain to make. But here, here's here's where my brain went, right? I heard, I saw Argon Caramel dancing, and then I, that made me think about the video that has been recommended to me that I have not yet watched about the history of the song Caramel Dancing. That's got like a, it's got in the thumbnail. It's like they didn't write it, so who are they? And it's like pointing to like the dances of like the Caramel Dancing video. And then I'm thinking that was that would probably be like a good historical video on that song. And from there, my brain was like, oh my gosh. 
I should tell the I should tell the chat about that great video I watched on the history of the Disney Channel theme song by what's his name? Oh no, De was it Defunct Lands that made that? Aquamarine, by the way, that's a pretty good uh, pretty good get from Fishing Treasure right there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Defunct Land that made that uh, video recently. It's like an hour and a half long about the history of like the Disney Channel theme, like the little four notes that play during like uh, like the bumpers between shows on the Disney Channel back in the day. It's a fantastic video. A fantastic documentary in every way, shape, and form. If you're interested in like weird niche aspects of history or if you're, if you're interested in good content at all, I highly recommend that you check that out. Have I been diagnosed with ADHD? I have not, but <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I've uh, I've thought about it many times that I might have at least elements of ADHD. That video keeps popping up in your recommendations. If you got an hour and a half to kill, by, by all means, I think it is a worthy watch. I'm not going to spoil anything about it because it is a, is a great video to just enjoy the journey. I'll put it this way. It was a video I put on in the background while I was working on other things because I was like, oh, this is a long video and I like to have like good background noise to listen to. And about like maybe 15, 20 minutes into the video, it stopped being background noise and, you know, I lost, you know, an hour or so of productivity just watching the video because it's just that good. And that very seldom happens to me. Usually I can, you know, set, like compartmentalize my mind enough to work on one thing and listen to the other. But that, that was just such a good video I had to pay attention. Yo, Charlie! Long time no see, how are you doing? I saw on Twitter, aren't you going on, you're going on like a vacation, right? I thought, I thought you were leaving like today or is it not for like a couple days yet? I very briefly saw it on Twitter in like the brief time that I went on there like, like a day ago. So I might be spreading misinformation, but uh, good to see you. Fun Clan's history video on the history of queuing. Fast passes was super fascinating. I also watched that one a while back. I've watched that, but it's uh, it was also a really good watch. Highly recommend for sure. Aunt Charlie Barley comes in here for the first time in so long, and she just says, "I'm God." All right, <laughs> I'm not going to dispute it. Oh, I'm good. Okay, you know. <laughs> Freudian slip and all that. We're going to London in two days. That is exciting. I'm going to assume it's not London, Ontario. I'm going to assume that is uh, London, England. That is very exciting. I've been to London one time in my life when I was like three years old. So I don't have... Uh, <laughs> I don't really have too many memories of it. Yo, dry second dried starfish. That's so good. How is it that the first two artifacts we get are two copies of the same artifact, and I'm not mad about it? It's actually really good, because we need to give one to Penny and one to the Dwarf. And we're, we're in good shape now. <laughs> You're trying to escape Canada? You know, fair. No disrespect to London, Ontario. I, I'm sure it's a lovely place, but, uh, yeah, it's not, I don't think it's a an ideal vacation spot. All right, dried starfish is good. Uh, I need to eat some stuff. Drink the Joja Cola and eat all the seaweed. I'll do it right next to Willy to make him uncomfortable. Because he definitely saw me fish up a bunch of this stuff and now just see, sees me chomping it down. Am I considering going to any conventions in the next year? I've been to one convention in my life. It was PAX Prime, back when it was still called PAX Prime. And I think 2011. It was a really fun time. I've never been to another one since. They're kind of anxiety-inducing, I'm not going to lie. But I could see myself going to one at some point. In the
London was a neat city. Went, went to a few times when I was in England for work. Literally the only memory I have of, of London, of the brief time... I don't even remember why we were living in London. We lived there for like three months when I was like three years old. And the only memory I have is being weirded out that... I have two memories. I have one remembering like an observation of like being weirded out that they were driving on the wrong side of the road compared to what I was used to. And I remember that there was a peach tree in our backyard of like the, the house that we were renting out or whatever. And I ate a peach off of that tree. I bit, I bit into the peach, I should say. And when I looked down, there was a little worm staring back at me from within the peach. And I'm pretty sure I cried for the rest of the day. And was and I've never eaten a peach since. I've eaten nectarines and you know similar fruit to that, but never a peach, never again. Those kinds of traumas just last with you forever. VidCon Maryland, let's roll up. When's VidCon? Oh man, is VidCon, is, is that like April, something like that? I don't remember when VidCon is. I would be, I would be down for sure. The only face reveal I want. I'm not necessarily averse to like showing my face online. In fact, I'm sure if you dig deep enough, you could probably find pictures of me online from PAX Prime back when I went. But it's just, you know, not something that I feel is necessary at this point in my life to, you know, associate my face with the uh, things. And also, having a face cam feel, just fills me with all types of anxiety. That was just embarrassing. Please, let me pretend like that fish never happened right there. Face reveal IRL. I suppose if I go to a con, that would be the way to, yeah. <laughs> Meeting people at a con, that could be fun. Love peaches, always cut them before eating them. I learned that the hard way. And more bait. Don't mind if I do. Let the British accent out. It's okay, we know. I thought about doing a British accent right there, but I don't want to insult people from, from Britain. <laughs> With my poor facsimile of their lovely accent. For the briefest of moments when I was talking when I was talking right then, the idea for a tier list of like accents from around the world crossed my mind. Like, oh that'd be a fun video. And then I realized how absolutely horrendous of an idea that is. That seems like just the this, this seems like a terrible idea. But now I've aired it out, it's out of my brain, so we can all we can all collectively agree that it's a terrible idea. <laughs> Base cams are overrated, pet cam. I could probably set up a pet cam. Minu sleeps enough that she would like would uh wouldn't move too much out of there. In fact, she most often sleeps during like my streams and stuff when I'm doing other things. It'd be hard because an accent could be S tier for being bad or good. That's true. That's true. That would be a more fun way to do it, is to like, like I could, I could, <laughs> I could do the accents, and then you guys could put them in a tier list for how, for how offensive they are. Probably never gonna happen. Not gonna lie to you, but you know, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, put. You never know. Sometimes you might might hit a dry spell of content. I feel sluggish from overexertion. No. Wait, I think I'm still okay though, right? But did I level up in fishing? I did level up in fishing. Will that cure exhaustion? I was so focused on the on the accent tier list. <laughs> all right, we're gonna go ahead and keep all this and this. I'll bring this with me. This, this. We'll just leave all the fish here. I think. Actually, I should bring some fish with me. 
Why don't I leave this here? Bring some fish with me for, like, energy purposes, because I'm going to be doing mining tomorrow instead of fishing. We'll bring these halibut. Let's just bring all the gold star fish that I can muster. I think this is fine. Combine that with the spring onions, I think we're chilling. And now we just, we just walk. A slow walk to the beach so we can pass out in the soft sand. I feel like I've never seen a seagull at night. In the game or in real life. Kind of unnerving, honestly. Can't intentionally do an accent, but sometimes one comes out. If I try to do the British accent. Oi, governor. Would you like a spot of tea? <laughs> That's the only thing I can try to say in a British accent. Alright, level 4 fishing. We're pogging. It did, it did fix my energy. Yo, it's raining as well. Happy to see it. And we got parsnips. This is a great day. This is a great day already. It's the best day ever. No context clip, thanks. Dang. <laughs> Talk like Lois Griffin for the whole stream challenge when? Ada. That's, the, that's all you get. When I was a kid, I used to think that I could, I had the perfect voice to voice Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. I no longer think that. Maybe I did when I was a kid. It's definitely not the case anymore. I don't even know what Stitch says. Doesn't he use, Is he like a Pokemon? He just says his name over and over again? Nineteen par I was like, where did these extra four parsnips come from? Then I remember Mixies exist. Okay, parsnips, I think we keep and then we're gonna go ahead. Should be something in here about build me 74 gold. Kind of spooky. Not gonna lie, Harvey. Alright, the mines are open. As long as it's not like the worst luck of all time. It's the worst luck of all time. I'm still going mining. I'm still going mining. I need to make progress no matter what, so we're, we're gonna do it. Fried starfish. I think I gotta go give one of these to Penny. I think I'm gonna give this to Penny. Oh wait, when does she come out of the come out of the house? I'll have it on me. Do I have enough wood? I should get wood for a chest to have at the mines. Sorry, so many so many thoughts that are crossing my my brain right now. It's kind of going a mile a minute. Which farm did I choose? We are playing on the Four Corners farm. Giftathon! Exclamation point info if you're not sure what the Giftathon is. Basically, we're giving every liked and loved gifts to every villager within the span of two in game years. I didn't even look. I have exactly 50 wood. I didn't even need to chop down the street. But he was offending me with its presence, so. I'm not even upset. No regrets. Okay, we're gonna deposit this, deposit all this. Craft me a chest, please. Let's go if I need to bring anything else with me. Not right now. I should probably I'm trying to think. Is there anything important I need to do right now? Reset mic? I, is my mic cutting out? Is my mic doing, like, weird things, or are we okay? See, I saw one comment about that from Jay Nuggets there, so I just want to make sure that we're still okay. It might be... It, it, I'm, it's probably going to eventually be time for me to, like, replace this mic. Yeah, it's doing things. Sounds okay to Charlie. A bit for a second. It was, but you refreshed and it's fine. Sounds okay. All right, we're just gonna keep going. Let me know if, be, if like it becomes like unbearably awful all of a sudden. Microphones are no known to die, you know, swift and and tormented deaths. Like a microphone can be okay, like 
for so long and then all of a sudden it just starts bleeping and blooping all over the place. But hopefully this one's okay. I have had it for a long time, so I'm probably going to be overdue for a uh, replacement here. It's all good. What are we bringing here? I don't need the wood. I'll bring the dried starfish and I'll just, I'll have it at the mines and I can leave to go give it to Penny or the dwarf in theory. Actually, you know what? Bring both of them. Because then the dwarf, it's right there for the dwarf, so. Okay. Away we go. What kind of mic do I have? It is a Turtle Beach microphone. It is a head headset mounted microphone. It's not like a standalone thing. I really should get a standalone one probably, but this one's been serving me so well for so long that I just haven't really had the the need the need for greed in the microphone department. Remember to spoil yourself a bit this Christmas. I'm the worst person to buy gifts for at Christmas because I like don't want anything. <laughs> like my mom will always ask me, like, don't forget to send me a, a list of like what you want for your Christmas and birthday, because like it's one day after the other for me. And I'll be like, yes, mom. And then I just can't think of anything. I'll sit there for like two hours trying to think of like what do I want or need, and I'd like think of like three things like my current list of wanted Christmas gifts is Pokemon Scarlet or Violet and that's it that's where that's where we're that's where we're at right now all right pause it that as well honestly let's we'll keep the fish for right now we can always come back for more food later on I think we go down 24th or 26th the 26th is my birthday boxing day Certified banger alert, by the way. Love this song. Pokemon Scarlet Violet is so fun. I've been so jealous looking in like the in like the the content creator server and seeing like everyone's Pokemon Scarlet and Violet journeys, and I'm like, man. <laughs> right now I don't have the I don't have the I don't have the money to spare on it right now, nor the time to play it even if I did want to buy it, so. These guys can drop uh Drop cherry bombs, right? I would very much like one for to open up the dwarf. Okay. I know that I know there's like two, like the two main p points of discussion I see around Scarlet and Violet is that they're some of the buggiest games of all time, and despite that, they're still like extremely fun. And I'm here for it. Bugs have never really bothered me. And I mean, it's still Pokemon at the end of the day. And a lot of the Pokemon designs that I've seen just seem like so good and so cute. And a lot of the mechanics I'm hearing about, it's like, it seems like a great game, all things told, even despite uh, its, uh, its possible shortcomings. Realizing now the flaw of having five, three, sp three spots dedicated to food. And also, I forgot to deposit my hoe at the top. I think we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that. I can always quartz is common enough that I don't need to worry about it. <laughs> Haven't gotten a single bug zero out of ten. False advertising. There's no 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 bugs in my copy. It's a perfectly crisp, clean experience. Bugs have never never bothered me except for that peach worm. Look, first off, a worm is not a bug; it's a an invertebrate. I'm gonna say that confidently, even though I'm not entirely confident. Pretty sure, right? Second off, why you gotta do me dirty like that? Well, I just wanna catch up on chat for a minute. I, I, I feel like I've been neglecting you guys. Looks like you're having a good time, though, so it's all good. Dad's birthday is December 12th, so you just got his birthday and Christmas presents delivered. Nice. 
I'm very glad to hear the the pluralization of presents there, because we of the of the holiday of the cursed holiday birthday sometimes are subject to people thinking that you can get a gift for us that doubles as a Christmas and birthday present, and that's just not how it works. Sorry to tell you. I want my Jigglypuffs to fly away and my limbs to infinitely <laughs> expand. That's a great quote out of context, I'm not gonna lie. Kinda love it. It's a great quote in context, dude. Alright, I should I should just go for the staircase, let's not dilly dally. Go for the staircase, and then I'm gonna leave. And we're gonna we're gonna empty the inventory right here. Fish bash bosh. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take a dried starfish to Penny because I don't want to put this off any longer. First gift of the challenge: dried starfish to Penny, one of her favorites. Let's do this. I, sh I should have brought out a spring onion for Linus too. Actually, I can grab this leek. Maybe we can hit up George. Not that George really needs it. He literally has three gifts that I have to give him over the course of two years, so I think we're fine. Where is Penny on a rainy Friday afternoon in spring? Is she at her home, or is she elsewhere? I have a craving for seaweed. You know what, Shane? I do need to befriend you, so I'll take that one. Need to befriend you for a pepper poppers recipe, I think. Library or home, that's what I was thinking. Not here, so probably the library. Trash cans? I should be looking for trash cans, you're so right. Looking in trash cans. Alright, I'm coming, bear. Oh, poor Gunther, you're gonna see me walking in with here with this. Precious, lovely artifact that he's missing from his collection. I'm gonna go give it to the girl over here. This looks special. There you go. First gift. Penny's favorites. Like gift. Dried starfish. Love to see it. We're on our way, folks. Can we get some, uh... Some gift emojis in chat? Gift-related emojis for breaking the seal with our first gift. The first of many. First of 725, to be exact. I did the math. R slash they did the math. Ooh, I'll take that. Oh, that's a perfect emoji right there. You guys you guys hit the nail on the head. Alright. Taking this. Uh, you know what? Take a flounder out of here. You might not imagine why, but this boy over here, he loves a flounder. Thanks, I like this. Do you see his face? He was so happy. Ocean is best alo enjoyed alone. I just gave you a flounder! Come on. <laughs> Disrespect, Sebastian. 666 money. Gift to Pog. We're killing it. Alright, a little trash. Me with a dish of the day. Emily? Emily like any of this stuff? Does Emily like daffodils? Emily might like daffodils. Second. Consulting the Bible of this challenge, my, my spreadsheet. Yeah. Emily likes daffodils, confirmed. Not a love gift for Sebastian, true, but it is a like gift, and we're doing we're doing all. Alright, here you go. She's feeling positive energy. Love to see it. Alright, Shane is at work. Can I give him a gift while he's at work? Actually, is he at work or is he elsewhere? When it, it's raining. Does he work when it's raining? I guess we can go find out, right? Have a good night, Allie. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for modding and doing and being cool, just in general. You take care. There's Shane right there. Would you like some seaweed? There you go. That's not what you're dressed as. Here's my payment as promised. Thank you, sir. So that, I'll take that. 
Also gonna check all these just so that that exclamation point stops, you know, pulsating. Flower for Pam. Does Pam like daffodils? Pam like daffodils, because I can still go catch her. Pam likes daffodils, all right. Take that. What do I think my relationships with people, not the ones I have to get my hearts up with, but the others, will be at the end? Probably not that high, honestly. Because I'll be so focused on the means of getting them their gifts that... I don't know. It'll probably be, like, decently high. I don't think I'm going to max out a lot of friendships on this uh, playthrough. Strangely enough. Yo! Hog. Another artifact for the collection. And by collection, I mean either Penny or the, or the Dwarf. Prehistoric Rib. I think this is one that drops pretty often from Pepper Rexes as well, so not a huge get, but Frog. Still nice to have. I think I'm going to try to get 410 of the mines at the very least here. Let's, let me sort out my inventory best I can. I'm going to go ahead and bring the anchovies behind. I'm going to go ahead and eat a few of these herrings. Dawn time. Thank you for being a member for seven months at the Positron level. That is very generous of you. Do I need to speak Dwarvish for the gifts to count? You do not, thankfully. The gifts, they don't give you friendship points unless you speak Dwarvish, I think. But they do show up in the gift log. I made sure to specifically check that before I started this challenge. So, good shout out. Thank you very much for that. But it is it has been covered. We are, uh, we are aware of that factoid, thankfully. this music? I think this is a, uh, oh, this is the crane game music. I'm pretty, I feel like I have that, I have that same train of thought every single time I hear this song. I'll be like, what's this music from? And then I'll be like, oh, it's the crane game. And so the cycle repeats ad infinitum. Elwick was telling me this is like the worst luck day of all time. It's like the worst luck ever recorded in Stardew Valley history. And I don't know, I hit like three staircases within like 30 seconds. Make that four. Slime. Feel a certain kind of way because I think you can drop Orvin scrolls at a heightened rate. Never mind. That, that wasn't actually a blue slime, was it? That was just a, that was a faux blue slime. A green slime that wanted to be blue. I'll take that. I'll also take the cave carrot over the sap. Sorry, sap enjoyers. What is this ladder luck? You tell me. Is it luck or is it skill? I'll let you be the judge. The leather boot action. Take it. And you know what? We can probably hit 415 if this luck streak continues. I'm on the lookout for rock crabs specifically as well because they can drop cherry bombs. The sooner I can access the dwarf, the better. Because you can access the dwarf with a cherry bomb or an upgraded pickaxe. As much I know to be true. And I'm not crazy, right? Rock crabs can drop cherry bo cherry bombs. I'm pretty positive. I'm gonna hit all these. The off chance the one was a rock crab. Like this coal very much. Thank you. I'll uh I'll consume the algae. Charlotte is cool. Thank you very much for being a member for four months at the neutron level. 
my favorite part about being a Stardew content creator just curious. Honestly, if I can be completely honest with you and not sound super corny, it's the people I've gotten to meet. Both, like, via, um... Both, like, as far as, like, you guys in chat goes, like, the audience. Like, you are an amazing audience. Best audience on YouTube, bar none. And, uh, like, other content creators. Like, Leap, who was in here earlier. Charlie, who was in here. I don't know if she still is. Um, Wallagug, Blade. So many people just out there. Ooh, Cherry Bomb! Cherry Bomb! Yes, okay. That's big. That's big. Like, they're some of the, like, the, the nicest, just best people I've ever known. <laughs> like, online or offline. It's very, they're, like, some, just, like, so sweet. They're really nice to talk to. They're all, like, it, we're all in, like, the similar, like, sort of bubble of, you know, making content and the struggles that come and go with that. And being able to have, like, a support network like that is really huge. And it's just, you know... Not to downplay your guys' involvement, like, so you guys make content creation so much easier and more fun as well, but... Not to make anyone cry. <laughs> but it's the truth. It's the truth, honestly. Like, that's the, that's the thing I enjoy about this more than anything. I could do this and not earn... Not earn a penny for the rest of my life doing content creation and still be happy because of the relationships that I've had. Aru's B. Well, thank you very much for being a member for seven months at the Electron level. So much time has passed. I know, right? We're going to be closing in on a year of memberships before too long here. That's crazy. And Jalopy being a member for seven months as well. Thank you very much for the Argon loves. Buzz, by the way. Buzz, buzz, buzz. It was kind of an awkward time to pause, but I felt the need to pause. All right, let's get this copper and be out of here. Yep. All right, a single other staircase would be absolutely phenomenal right now. Let's just hope that this is not where my staircase ruck stair staircase ruck staircase luck runs out. I would love to hit floor 15 and also make it up in time to give the dwarf a dried starfish. Sentences you never thought you'd hear in Stardew Valley. We need, to, we need to give the dwarf a dried starfish. Stat! It's of the utmost importance. We can't waste any time. Ooh. Little crab? Uh, I'll take this crab over the slime, I think. Thank you. You're the best. Uh, Uno reverse card. No, you. No, you guys really are the best. All right, let's pop out of here. Let's go ahead and bomb the path open. I'll go grab a dried starfish simultaneously. Pop all this in here. I can't believe that it's, it's, it's literally the first week of spring year one, and we've made it to the dwarf. Here you go, buddy. Enjoy your dried starfish. Ah, husnimus me ob homie. Can we get some homie spam in chat? Homie? That's, that's the sound of a happy dwarf, if I've ever heard it. Where is he here? Dwarf. Yeah, see, it does show up in his gift log. I don't know if that's actually... So that's, yeah, I don't know if you actually get friendship points for that, but it does show up here, thankfully. Homie, homie. The anthem of a generation. Homie. It is getting late in... What do you think the odds are we can make it to floor 20? Probably not great, but also not zero, right? Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and. <laughs> uh, well, well, yeah. Do I need to? Do I need to take anything with me here? I mean, I'll take this stuff. You know, keep it. I should also. You know what? I should craft. Here's what I should do: craft some fern eye. Need more stone. And just get smelting a little bit. Do a little bit of smelting here. We do a little bit of smelting in this uh <laughs> in this region. Toxu Totan. <laughs> Let's keep it PG13 in here. Uh homie YS, thank you for being a member. Wait, not homie, YS, thank you for being a member for seven months of the Electron level. Happy to see the streams again. I'm very happy to be streaming again, at least for you know, for right now, for the holidays. 
having a good time so far. Charlie speaks fluent Dwarvish. There's a Dwarvish translator on online. I don't know how accurate it is. Like a Stardew Dwarvish translator. I don't know how uh, how reliable it is necessarily, but it is a thing that exists. What else do I want to bring home with me? Probably some geodes. Probably... I mean, it doesn't... Let's bring the hoe. We'll leave it like that. And I think we'll just, like, smelt here. Did I, did I get a uh, mining level? I did get a mining level, so we're good. I think I also got a farming level, so... It's true. You speak fluent dwarvish? So worldly. Wait, if you speak fluent dwarvish, can you... Hold on. What does this mean? Dual olaitu to no laup on meal hat o himo. Wait, homie in himo? See, this is why different languages can be so confusing. What what my man the dwarf just say? No cheating by looking at the wiki either. Please. And we'll smell again. So is a Junimo translator? That's, pro that's probably true. I've never seen the Junimo Translator, but I could probably imagine that, that would be a thing. Can I cast a spell to fix your headache? Afraid not, but uh, I can recommend a well-known home remedy called sleep. Good night's sleep will probably cure that headache. Not guaranteed, but uh, you know, I think it's been proven to be pretty effective most of the time. Hello, please stop blowing up my house, but thanks for the starfish rough translation. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> oh, man. I kind of feel bad now. That, is that really what he wants? That, he wants me to stop blowing up his house? Ooh. Oh, you're so lucky. You're so lucky that I can only physically stay up until 2 a.m., you silly dwarf. You sussy dwarf. Man was about to be on the receiving end of some serious retribution. He did say thanks for the star official. Can't hold that too much against them. I've been billed 82 gold for this service. Get out of here, Morris. He likes you. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and deposit all this for right now. I will water my crops. Parsnip as well, don't mind if I do. So mean. Look, <laughs> he started it. Actually, technically I started it by like blowing up his house, but you know, that's besides the point. That's what I'm saying. Anyways, we're gonna go mining again, I think. Actually, how long have I been streaming? I don't even know. You know what? I don't even need to look because I'm still having a good time, so I'm gonna worry about that. This quest here. Zero of ten slime slain. I beg to differ. Imperialist Argon. Alright. We're gonna go ahead and bring... I think this is a good enough... Good enough stuff to bring. I can give that prehistoric rib to the dwarf when we're up there as well. That's a, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's such a weird... Why they like the prehistoric rib? There's so there's gonna be so many weird moments of just giving random artifacts to those two, and that they're gonna love it. They're gonna love it, especially when once Penny's my wife, and I'm like, here, have this handful of glass shards I found on the beach, and she'll be like, OMG, so thoughtful. Blushing emoji. Can't wait. Can't wait for that moment. We're going to go ahead and bring all this, I think. Um, these copper bars. You know, I'll keep, I'll bring the copper bars as well, just to, no, we'll leave the copper bars. I was going to see, say to keep track of them, but I don't think we really about that. And let's head on up. On out to the mines. Have a good night, Nix. Thanks for hanging out. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Take care. 
wild horseradish for my boy Linus. Pretty sure he likes horseradish eye. Penny is my wife. It's a necessary evil for this challenge. It's technically not necessary because it's uh also talk to Linus, why not? He's happy by himself, you know. Technically not necessary if we get lucky enough, but it's a good safety net to be able to bypass the two gift per week limit through marriage to Penny, since she has so many gifts that we need to give her. Pause it all this nonsense. I'm going to go ahead and bring the parsnips as my food source this time, just, you know, to have only one... Only one slot taken up by it. Homie. Yeah, see, we're not we're definitely not getting any friendship points with him, otherwise he'd be at the top of the list here. He does not understand why <laughs> this that's kind of the best part. He doesn't understand why I'm giving him dried starfish and ribs. And he doesn't need to understand. Who needs to speak Dwarvish when you speak the mutual language of love? Although it would be kind of nice to know what homie means. So ideally, I think I want to get to... If I can get to floor 40 today, I know it's kind of a pipe dream, but I think it's, I think it's highly doable. And then we can concern ourselves, I can concern myself with upgrading my pickaxe to progress from then onward. I think having a copper pickaxe is going to be pretty important from floor 40 onward at the very least. Otherwise it'll just be way too slow. I hope I'm not shooting my, or setting my sights too high by going for 440 today, but... Anytime I think of 440 as well, I, it, my brain just, without fail, goes back to the no level of challenge. And I just think, man, imagine reaching floor 40 on like day 6 of spring year 1. And then think back on how hard it was to reach floor 40 at challenge. Crazy paradigm shift. I'm not even going to worry about you. You can harass me all you want. Buzz, buzz, you're a little hard at. I'm, I'm not concerned. I'm just looking for a staircase. I need a staircase. I'm holding out for a staircase till the end of the day. It's got to be soon, and it's got to go down. And I hope that it's not far away. I need a staircase. Thank you. That's a ladder, technically. But <laughs> you know, tomato, tomato. New one, at least one of these guys. One of these. Oh, we got two of them. Um, bars. Thank you. I was pretty proud of that one. <laughs> off, just off the cuff, we'll take it. I'll take it. You don't always land on a winner when you do those ad lib songs, but. The instant geo. The fact that it ended with me actually getting a staircase too was perfect. Alright, you guys get out of here. I do see my health is starting to dwindle a little bit. It's not the first time I've made that song reference either. It's a good song. Oh, Dwarf Squirrel 1, Pog! Yeah. Uh, I would like this coal, please. Actually, probably the sap would have been better to keep than the, the slime, I'm not going to lie to you. Backpack upgrade would be nice to invest in too, but we've got so much to like invest our money in early on. Can we really afford it? I've gone through a whole challenge. I've gone through all the price of perfection without a backpack upgrade, so we should be fine. Data or data? I think I usually say data. So that's one of those ones that I'm kind of non-committal to pronunciation. Many words I have a a strong stance on like how I pronounce them, 
I'm not necessarily averse to other people pronouncing them different ways, except for Zed, of course. That one is kind of like, I, I can flip-flop. I can see data, I can see data. I think data rolls off the tongue a bit better. But you also gotta be, you also gotta worry about the context that you use it in, because like, if you tell, if you say to someone, I want my data, depending on the conversation you're having, that could go many different ways. Whereas if you say, I want my data, it's kind of, it's less ambiguous. Data for me. I mean, if you want a real answer, just ask a ask a data or data scientist, I suppose. There was a solid year where I took like uh, I took like online courses about like data science and analysis and like make writing from computer programs and stuff to like analyze it. It was something I thought maybe I could make a career at, at some point, and yeah, to, to a certain extent, I probably still could, but I haven't. I didn't retain a lot of the information, so like, even when I was going through it, I was kind of like, you know, this may this might not be for me. I just didn't have the didn't feel the passion for it as much as I felt like I should have for something I might want to consider a career in. And I think it's important to, to be able to recognize that. Especially like early on. You don't want to commit yourself to like a four year diploma and then like, you know, year three and a half you decide, you know, I'm not really into this anymore. You want to make sure that it's something you uh, see yourself doing for not not necessarily the rest of your life, but a considerable amount of time if you're going to put that much time and effort into learning about it. I think there's discourse in the computer science community over how to pronounce data. A hundred percent. In fact, if there if there was going to be discourse about it anywhere, it's going to be there. Because that's where the word comes up more often than not. I'm starting to realize I'm probably not going to reach 440. <laughs> Given that it's like almost 5 p.m. and I'm at 419. Anything good worth keeping here? Probably these gemstones are worth sacrificing a slot for. Go ahead and trade that. Like so. Like so. But really, I, I'm just kind of looking for a staircase. I'm not going to do the song again, but maybe I should. It worked out pretty well last time. Star Trek character data says data, so in, in your head that's correct. That's fair. I never watched Star Trek at any point in my life, so I can't really... I don't really have that nugget of nostalgia to lean back on, but... If I had, I would probably be an unequivocal data supporter. Thank you. Okay, finally. Better late than never, as they say. We're going to go ahead and head up here. Take that. Yeah, I guess I won't take that because my inventory is freaking full. The brim. I'm also going to craft a secondary furnace. Always be smelting, so they tell me. Cause all this nonsense. And I think we head back down. Did I watch the World Cup? I've like I keep hearing about the World Cup. I'm not really a sports guy, but I know it's like kind of like a bit the big thing going on lately, so How about that sports ball, eh? I mean I can't I, I probably can't really hold a conversation about it, but you know, I understand very, a lot of people are very passionate about it. And I'm a big fan of passion. So do you enjoy the if you enjoy soccer slash football? More power to you. One of my coworkers is actually huge into football. I've heard a, a significant amount about the World Cup from him specifically. But I just don't like have enough of an interest in it to internalize a lot of the things he tells me, so I just kinda like, you know, smile and nod and try to 
try to play off of what he's telling me. Usually works out. Thank you. I don't know why I just said thank you like that. Thank you to the bugs for dying, I guess. Grab this copper real quick. Alright, we're gonna eat these parsnips. People who call soccer football annoy me in a special petty way. I mean, I try to call it football most of the time, but I did grow up in a place where it was exclusively called soccer. not technically, like, wrong to call it soccer, is it? It's just that, you know, football fans will get very upset with you if you call it soccer. You know what? I can respect it. I'm trying to think of something that I'm equally passionate about. Like the letter Z, I guess. But that's kind of more in a joking sense. Oh, you mean like people who like call it, who like call it soccer and then get mad when you call, when you like call football as they know it, American football? Yeah, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> you can call it soccer all you want, but you got to recognize that, you know, you can't, you can't be upset at other people for call, for like finding a different name for football slash American football. I'm, it's, you know, I think we're all on the same page on that one, more or less. Uh, is this better for me? Definitely not. Get out of here. Stand. Rubber boot. Like ice hockey? Yeah, like ice hockey. Ice hockey versus like street hockey, I guess. Yeah. Pause it all this noise. We're making up for lost time. I can hear them screaming at me from the chat. Time loss, time loss, time loss. Deserve it. He didn't even get mad, dude. I thought they make like a little like angry bubble emoji over their head when when you do that to them. Dwarf did not care. We don't speak a common language, so maybe he cursed me in Dwarvish, but we'll never know. All right, if I can make it to floor thirty, I think I can I can be happy here. Did I level up in anything today? I think I hit level combat, level one combat there. Pretty sure you're supposed to basket the ball. Is basket a verb that you can use in that in that sense? I used to be like decently into basketball exclusively for the reason that a girl that the girl I had a crush on for like 11 years was a uh, an avid basketball player and fan. I never really found that interesting. That probably should have been a sign to me that you know maybe it wasn't uh, wasn't meant to be, but it's all good. I've discovered that I'm that I'm ace now anyway, so you know who knows how that would work out. Anything can be a verb if you want it to be. Was she tall? She was like taller than me. I think she was tall she was definitely taller than the average girl, so but she was good at basketball. He said 11 years, that's some dedication. Dedication or, you know, you just blind hope. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it did not really end well. In fact, it probably ended in the worst way it could have, but, you know, that's not a story for, 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 for a stream. 100% optimism, exclamation point optimism and all that.
say la vida. You have a friend, she's like 6'5. Does she play basketball? If not, you know, that's more power to it. Not all tall people have to play basketball, and not all basketball players have to be tall. I'm sure it's a, it's a distinct disadvantage if you're not that tall, but, you know, I'm willing to work past that. I don't think we're going to hit 430 here. I'm just going to go ahead and explore a little bit. Get some crates, maybe find some last minute ores. A monster here. Monster party. Ooh, new last minute cherry bomb, I'll take it. More ammunition for my dwarven friend. Pretty tall, but you don't like basketball? That's the thing, yeah. It's not like tall people have a gene specifically that they that want to play basketball. <laughs> not how science works. Alright, I think we're... Good. Oh, I should probably... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it to my chest in time. Uh, okay, we got that. Nice. All right, perfect. Perfectly planned out. Level 2 mining, too. Let's get that at the very last minute there. Ooh, my potatoes. Love to see it. I don't think we sell our potatoes yet. I think we will sell these potatoes. I think we want to sit stockpile as much as we can to like make money and sell it right before the egg festival so that we have the money right in time for the uh for to buy strawberry seeds. Because I keep passing out and losing little bits of money here and there, and that'll add up, so I might as well save everything I can, and I just have to remember to sell it on the night of the twelfth. That's the one thing that I need to remember more than anything else, so don't let me forget, chat. I'm going to put a post-it note on that. I don't actually have post-it notes on me right now, but we'll just pretend. Also, hydration break real quick. Beautiful. Okay. Um, I should keep going in the mines today, I think. I think it's of the utmost importance to just get get down there as fast as possible, progress through the mines as quickly and as as soon as possible. But there's some gift giving potential for sure. PJR spam in chat, PJR spam. I'd love to hear it. I'm gonna go ahead and take this dandelion that I just found. And I say go, be ready to grow. Bring anything else with me. I have a dwarf scroll one at the uh up at the mines. I can I can't give that to the dwarf because I've already given him two gifts this week. But I can get yeah, I give him the dried starfish and the slipped rib. <laughs> so weird. But I can give I can give the dwarf scroll to Penny. Be in a good spot. Otherwise, I think we just uh just send it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that stuff. Linus stealing my money again. Oh, I need to water these crops. Hold on. Do a little watering around here. Hey, I can't pronounce that name. Thank you for the $5 super chat. Greatly appreciate the generosity. Love your streams, Argon. I've watched many of Odd, and I'm happy to catch a live stream even if I'm late to it. No worries. Happy to have you around. Probably going to be wrapping up in the next, you know, 15 to 30 minutes or so here, but I'm happy to have you for the for the tail end of the stream here. I'm glad you've been enjoying the VODs and everything. Again, I greatly appreciate the support. Okay. By giving two gifts to Linus... Oh, wait, it's a new week! It's a new week! I, I forgot that Sunday is the new is the new week for some reason. <laughs> All right, so we can we can give ever if the, the world's our oyster as far as gift giving goes. Good. You always join late. Hey, no worries. That's why the vods stay up, and that's why you know 
it's this it's the nice thing about streams you don't really need to be there for the entire thing you can kind of come and go as you please drop in and uh and drop out show up at a late time i know it can feel like you've missed out on some stuff but you're here in the moment and that's what counts someone was throwing rocks at your tent that's no good have a dandelion I didn't already give him a dandelion, did I? Yeah, okay, we're good. World is your cockle. Exactly. That's what I've been saying my whole life. Okay. I will say, we need to keep track of this. I'm, I've, I should have given Penny a gift yesterday. Because we have now missed a si we have missed one gifting opportunity for Penny. Of the potential, we have 64 gifting opportunities, and she needs 57 gifts. So we've missed one, but we we're banking on being able to marry Penny. So maybe it doesn't matter as much, but still, it's important to keep that in mind that I need to give try and give her two gifts a week, every single time, because otherwise I'm just wasting potential. And if I do want to marry her. Then I will need to. I'll be needing to like give her. I should be giving her gifts every week anyway. So just like to get that friendship up, right? Doing like gifts too. That is part of the challenge now. We've expanded it to two years as opposed to the one year I originally started with. And to compensate for the challenge aspect, we're doing liked and love gifts. Speaking of, let's go ahead and give the dwarf his daily artifact. And we'll bring halibut the, uh, for the halibut. Cool. Dwarf scroll one for my dwarf scroll mun. So paranoid about checking this stuff. I'll probably like check these between streams and fill up my spreadsheet with like the gifts I have and haven't given. Now, I think we continue on through the mines, at least until 440, and then we'll probably maybe maybe revert to fishing at that point until we get our pickaxe upgraded. How much is a pickaxe upgrade? It's like 2,000 for the copper pickaxe, right? I need, to, I need to save money for strawberry seeds, too. There's so much to spend money on in this chapter. Oh my gosh, there's so much to do! And everything's turning to bugs around me. I can't take this. Everything's, they're, they're all pupating. Stop pupating in front of me. Get out of here. No wobble dogs. You're not allowed to pupate in here. So many Stardew creators are Canadian. I know myself, Wallagug, King Nooblitz, uh, Charlie lives in Canada. I don't, I don't, I can't think of any, I'm sure many other content creators are Canadian. I'm just gonna say, some of the most talented people on planet Earth come from Canada. We have a pretty good track record of like, uh, like celebrities and actors and stuff. And, and great content creators too. Like let's 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 name like Jim Carrey as a quintessential example. Jim Carrey, you got Wayne Gretzky, greatest hockey player of all time. Um, Avril Avril Lavigne is Canadian. In fact, I'm pretty confident in that. Kelly Clarkson, maybe? No, Kelly Clarkson was the winner of American Idol, right? I got that conflated in my head, I think. Celine Dion, that's who I was thinking of, not Kelly Clarkson. There's considerable talent that comes out of Canada. I mean, there's a considerable talent that comes out of every country on Earth. I just hear mostly about the Canadian ones because, like, patriotism or whatever. Justin Bieber, there you go. Do 
you know, you want to talk about songs that give you like some kind of nostalgia. This song always makes me like nostalgic for the no level up video. The song I use like towards the very beginning of it to as part of the explanation process. I, always, I, I still, to this day, think it's a very fitting song for that, uh, for the vibe I was going for there. Where's more Cult of the Lamb, speaking of? I would definitely like to play more Cult of the Lamb, but I've been so busy lately just, like, editing. Here's the thing, I've been, it, it might look like I've been, you know, I, I mean, I have been radio silent, and I should be providing more updates more regularly, and that's on me for sure. But the significant majority of my time that I've that I'm been like away from streaming, I have been editing a single video. Like it's been I've been putting a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into that video. I hope it's gonna pay off in the end. I know it's a long time to wait for a video. Don't get me wrong, and I, I am I do apologize for that. But it is uh it's shaping up pretty nicely, and I think it's gonna be worth the wait. I hope. But I, then I also had this idea for this lovely holiday challenge stream. And I was like, you know what? I gotta... It's a good opportunity to provide a little extra content in the interim. And I'm just, like, very, you know, passionate about it. Because I think it's a, I think it's a fun idea. And when you have that passion for an idea, I think it's important to chase it. It's a very roundabout way of saying that, you know, I'll get, I'll get back to Cult of the Lamb at some point, but... Probably not anytime soon until I've, you know, cleared my plate of other responsibilities. Editing is difficult. I think I make editing more difficult than it has to be. Like, my process for editing is probably not the most streamlined, optimized thing in the world. I'll, I'll say that readily. And I'm also very much a perfectionist when it comes to editing. Like, oftentimes I'll be animating something with, like, the keyframes or whatever, and I'll I'll spend, like, so like an extra minute on something, like, trying to get the keyframe exactly to the perfect, perfectly exact pixel. Even though, like, when you're actually watching the video, you can, you can very rarely tell when something is off by a pixel unless it's something that has to be pixel perfect. And just, like... Those little minutes where I do that, they add up over the course of a day, and I find myself working a 14-hour day of editing a video, and I'll have gotten through 30 seconds of footage. <laughs> and I'll be like, man, I was very unproductive today, but the truth is I was very productive in my own unique way. But, he was getting there slowly but surely. Rome was not built in a day. Not that I'm comparing my video to the Roman civilization. Seems a little grandiose. They may say it's grandiose, but to a dragon, it's just gross. Name that song. You can't. That's a, that's a deep cut right there. Someone can name that song. I'll be impressed. Yes, the fishing video. Not, not Price of Perfection. Price of Perfection will... Like, the summary video for that will come... That's going to be my next big project after the fishing video that I'm working on, but... There's spoilers, by the way. It's, it's It heavily involves fishing. The upcoming video that I'm working on, that's kind of the, the main theme with it. I have yet to divulge much more information than that. Dragonborn? Good guess, but no. When's the video coming out? Hard to say right now. I wanted to originally get it out. I mean, originally, originally, I was like, oh, I'll get it out by the end of September. And that became the end of October. And then that became the end of November. And I'm hesitant to say the end of December because, you know, I don't have a great track record at this point. So I'm just going to say early 2023 and call it at that. Anything I would drop for this quartz? Probably not right now. Everyone comes out in their own time. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just my process for working right now. 
I'm not saying it's ideal. I'm not saying it's right or wrong or that anyone else's uh, content production strategy is right or wrong. Mine is just very, very slow, turns out. But I'm hoping that when it does come out that uh, I hope you guys like it. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I just want to make people happy with the with the content. Yo, Omni Geode, that's actually big. We're gonna need a lot of these for um to trade for artifact probes. I think that's gonna be our main way of building up the gift log, the penny and the dwarf. Everyone comes in their own time. You're making a gay joke. I I, I get you. I get you. I mean, that's also true. Depending on your situation. The, the staircase right there. I'm actually kind of amazed that I saw that. Have a good one there, Autumn. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you've been enjoying it. And uh, enjoy... Enjoy school tomorrow. Just well. Oh, floor 39 coming up. Always remember the layout of this floor, it's so special to me. Christmas is like three weeks away, you're telling me, oh my gosh. Christmas always just has a habit of sneaking up on you, doesn't it? I do like Christmas. Of, like, the big holidays, I think Christmas... Eh, I don't know if it's my favorite. I really like Halloween, too. Halloween is pretty, pretty great. Christmas has got to be up there. And I'm not just saying that because that's when my birthday falls. In fact, having my birthday around Christmas kind of detracts from it in some ways. It just becomes, like, a little bit too overwhelming, but... The general vibe of Christmas, just, I mean, exclamation point optimism and all that. We're all about that holly jolly cheer around here. And Christmas, the, the just the general feel of Christmas exudes optimism and, you know, innocence and all that sort of good stuff. Those good wholesome qualities. I'm here for it, 100%. Go. Go ahead and swap something out for this amethyst, probably. Actually, maybe not. We already got some amethysts. Actually, you know what? I will eat this halibut. Only one left anyway, so it's fine. Have a good night there, Lady, L Lady Lee. Thank you for tuning in. A single staircase, please. I'm literally want. Thank you. Thank you. I was about to, about to go off on a tirade. All right, floor forty. That's a good spot to be. I do want to smelt some stuff. Also, probably make make a couple. Maybe like two more furnaces here. Yeah, make two furnaces and just go ahead and boop. Got some stuff like so. Anything else here for right now. Anything else I should do? I should pro I probably want to. Here's the thing. Do you guys think that I should? Do I think I should? upgrade the pickaxe before the egg festival because I kind of want to save my money right for strawberry seeds and all that stuff as many of them as I can so that I can then get more money after that but I would also like to have my pickaxe upgraded as soon as possible in order to progress further in the mines more easily or do we not worry about the pickaxe upgrade yet and just like Rudge on. Hey there, Zombo. Save money for strawberry seeds. Wait till after. And buy stuff after that. Yeah, I feel like that's probably the way to go. I think I want to go ahead and leave. I think I'll probably leave 
the mines where they are right now, and then maybe spend the rest of my time leading up to the Egg Festival fishing some more. I think fishing is where the real money is going to be at. Boat strawberries? Yeah, it seems most people are in favor of the strawberries, and that's kind of where I was leaning anyway. So I think what I'll do is... Let's go ahead and just... I think what I should do here... I should bring some of this stuff back with me, maybe. Actually, we'll, we'll leave this here, because I think we're going to be smelting a lot of stuff here regardless. Uh, bring these geodes home with you. I'm just I'm just looking at all the stuff that I might want to bring home with me at this point. We can make a couple trips and try and bring stuff home here. Actually, you know what? I should probably not even worry about that for the time being and just focus on uh because I can when I like unlock the minecarts, I can bring stuff home a lot easier, a lot more quickly. So, what can I spend the rest of the day doing here? the legend included in all fish? It would be, but thankfully there are no villagers who have all fish in their liked gifts. So we can... we dodged the bullet there, thankfully. <laughs> Probably make tons of money fishing while waiting for it to upgrade. You can get more money than you'll want to, than you'll want to water. That's true. I think... but I think also, like, I can make money now anyway, and we'll we'll have the extra 2,000 for strawberries, and then we can still fish afterwards. We might lose a little bit of efficiency in trying to get through the mines, but I think the amount of... I think I think we'll still be fine. I think this is I think this is the right call, is to go ahead and leave this here for right now. Oh, hold on a second. My mom is texting me. Just want to make sure there's not any kind of emergency. We're good. Okay. I think I want this crab pool. We'll bring this stuff. And bring these as well, because these are good giftables and they don't really have a good reason to stay here. And I will bring the geodes as well. I'll just, I'm going to make my way home. Making my way. Get 80 berries, then profit. I was thinking, yeah, 80 or 90 strawberries was where my mind was landing. But I was looking through a guide, and it talked about getting, like, 90 strawberry seeds, and I'm like, you know what? This person seems to have done a thing or two about... A th no, they seem to know a thing or two about a thing or two. It's a very comprehensive guide. So I think somewhere in that ballpark is a good, uh, is a good place to be for strawberries, for sure. And deposit all this stuff. And honestly, I mean, it's kind of an awkward time right now. We got, we still have some time. I could go fishing for a little bit. What I think I'm actually going to do is chop down some more trees for wood so we can have a few more chests. At least one more chest in order to organize things a bit better. Just for peace of mind. And also, I mean, we're going to need at least one more chest for your storage capacity. Hey there, Andrew. Happy to see you. Hope all is well. Before I use too much energy here, I should also head down to the little quarry section of the farm and see if anything is uh, happening down there. I know the things that appear there, they do scale with your mining level to some degree. I don't know the exact mechanics behind it. Not anymore, anyway. I, I used to know them. I researched them for the No Level Up video at one, once upon a time. Yeah, I see some geode nodes. Fan of that. I see some copper as well. Bring onions, that's probably a good idea as well. Alright, this should be just enough to, to get that. And then let's go grab some spring onions. Springy onions. For a little extra energy economy.
I just thought about the traveling card, I guess I it doesn't hurt to check the traveling card. It's it's kind of a long way to go out of my way, but and I don't really need anything for it in this challenge anymore, so it might not be probably not worth my time most of the time, is it? I know it's closed right now, so it's not even an issue to worry about, but future days. Gold one right there. Uh, we probably get rid of these maple seeds for it. Extra spring onions. I know some of the times they spawn down here, weirdly enough. Right. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it back to my farm, so instead I will wander around, see if I can find any extra bridge. I can probably toss this sap and be okay. Yeah, the cart closes at like 8 p.m., so we're not worrying about it right now, but for future prospects, it's good to think about. I'm gonna go pass out next to this pig, though, if you don't mind. If you, I, is the pig still outside? Does the pig sleep outside? I don't think I've ever been to the traveling cart this late. Oh, my poor sign pal. He is sleeping, because he's not... Normally, you right-click him, and he makes a little oinky wink sound. All right, we're going we're gonna to pass out right here. It's an owl! Not of the stone variety, though. All right, level 2 combat. Level 2 foraging as well. I'll take that. And I think we're good there. I think I'm probably going to call it a stream there. We're a little over three hours. Sometimes I go three hours, sometimes I go four hours. I think I got to work up to that four hours. Still getting my sea legs back again with streaming, but I hope that you have all had a fun time tonight. I know I have. I think we were off to a pretty good start with Holiday Farm. Haven't given as many gifts as I would have liked to, but I think we've given the important gifts. We've given... Like, we, st we started on the artifact grind already, which is pretty big. Of course, it's easy when, like, you don't, literally haven't given any artifacts yet, so it's just going to get harder and harder as we get deeper and deeper into this artifact hole. But, I look forward to seeing how this journey progresses with all of you. One way or another, we're going to make it there. The next stream for this challenge will probably be... I want to say... Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. I think I'll probably do two. I, if I'm, I'm going to do, do either two, one or two, one or two more streams this week. Thursday and Friday would be the days I would do them. So definitely Thursday, and sort of you know, non-committally on Friday. But Thursday, I will have a notification for you and be all ready. So hope you all have a great night. Be good to each other. And I look forward to seeing you on the flip side. I'll send you off with the usual fan art compilation. Till then, though, this is Argon Matrix signing out. Thank you, and have a great night. Bye-bye.